we should be live. Good evening, everyone. We have to Let's bear me over the comments up. So far, so hey, Craig. Hey, Harry. Hey, DJ. Hey, Mark. Okay. Hey, Amy. Hopefully, a few more people will be joining us as we go along. Um, but tonight we are joined by the wonderful Luke of Star Spiders. The wonderful Luke who can't find the comments on the video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really struggling there. Like, what do I do with that? Where, where are the comments? <laughs> I can't see it. I think it, is it just are, are you on the YouTube app? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, Trash at all. Hey, Darren. Hey, Chris. Hey, Dave. Hey, Janie. Hey, Netman. Yeah. <laughs> I will figure this out. I'm going to do the browser, I think. No worries, Chris. So, yeah, good evening and welcome. Um, so we'll be asking uh, Luke all sorts of questions. Get your questions in. Uh, and ask Luke, let's test him out and stuff. Um, but before we go into it, we're going to be running something kind of throughout the stream. Um, hey, Philip, and that is, I don't know, Luke, do you want to say what you're going to be doing tonight? Yeah, so I'm going to just work out how to do the comments on my phone. So I need a bit of time to do that, but um, yeah, I'm going to be giving away a mystery box. Um, and I think actually, you know, I'm not even going to say what value it is. Ooh, gonna just make real it mystery a surprise, yeah. Real mystery. Um, obviously, that will need to be posted in the new year when we resume posting. Um, so I think we can start looking around about the fourth, but it all depends on strikes if there's going to be more strikes um, and also weather permitting. Um, but yeah, so all you have to do to enter is uh, be subscribed to Phil, and uh, if you give me a follow on Instagram and then just send me a message. Uh, what should that message be? What message should we send? Um, I think if you want a beginner box, just write beginner. Um, and if you want uh, just any mystery box, just write mystery. And I think from there, we can pick. Okay. Hey, Mark and Victoria. There we go, Jeff. Just put your Instagram in the chat again. Hey Scott. So uh yeah, people can get on if you're not already uh following uh Luke on the uh, Instagram. Obviously, uh, this is really only just open to the UK because I can't post out uh over yeah. Yeah. So, but what we can do anyone that obviously does want to enter. Okay, I've got the chat they can gift it to someone within the UK. Oh, that's such really hey, hey. not the comments. <clears throat> so, so but how is everyone doing today? Has everyone had snow today? Oh, oh uh, yeah. been lucky on that. Wasn't working today, but um, well, we've got a good like five or six inches of snow, which we haven't had in a long time here, especially not in December. Okay, amazing. We're already getting entries. That is great. Uh, Lupang, um, yes, Daddy oh, Spider hey, does know. Daddy, Daddy Spider does know. Um, and it's actually quite funny because um, <laughs> it was the last show that we was at uh, on the 4th and uh, Phil came over and I completely forgot to tell my dad. So I planned all this with Phil and I just didn't say to my dad, I was, oh, actually, dad, yeah, I'm giving away a mystery box and uh, Phil died. He was cool with it. He was cool with it. But um, <laughs> yeah, you need to keep him in the know a bit more. Chris, I've just seen you've just started following me. Chris. How? Chris wasn't following me before. No, he wasn't following me before. This guy's been to my house. He's a good friend. Hell, Chris. Me. What are you doing, Chris? Um, yeah. yeah, DJ, if you want. If you want to enter and if you win, yep, you can gift it uh, to a person of your choice and then within the UK. I think that's that, that's fair. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, any any box that can be gifted. Yeah, it's the season of giving, so of course. Sort of thing. 
you know, and that goes for anyone who, you know, perhaps I've got two accounts, Zoom on Wheels and a private one. Oh, yeah. That's okay, yeah. Right account. <laughs> so, I, I, <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Fair play. <laughs> So, okay. well, okay. how well? Perfect. How's it going this week? Well, with all the weather and everything, um, I know. Well, you've stopped shipping at the moment. Having not probably going to ship now until no the new year. But um, sorry, we start with that because obviously it's quite a lot going on in the UK in terms of the strikes and everything mm. and stuff. But so sometimes we we as consumers and so the buyers and stuff, we don't necessarily understand or realise just what effect that has on you guys as the sellers. No, no. What but then is that, has that sort of had on you? Oh, it's been awful. Um, so I did actually have, so this was probably about a month ago now, um, and my Monday post, so there was no strikes planned for the week. Um, and my Monday post, I posted nine orders on the Monday, and all nine orders were lost in the system. So... So the, on the tracking, the only update was that they'd been taken at the post office and all 10, no, all nine, sorry, were lost for 11 days in the post. So, yeah, needless to say, I had to replace all of their orders. The only survivor of all of them, unfortunately, uh, was a, a H pork for peas, which I found quite interesting. But in thinking about it, in Africa, where they come from, I suppose at night, the temperature just dropped quite a lot. Yeah. So yeah, unfortunately that was the only one. So so that was bad. Um, and then after that happened, and then with the strikes, a couple of parcels were taking an extra day or two to get there, and everything was fine. But I just sat down with my dad and I said, "Hey, look, like let's just postpone shipping. It's it's not worth it. I mean, the live arrival of the spiders, and I mean the spider safety has to come first. So we'd much rather refund you if you don't want to wait. Not a problem at all. We'd much rather refund than post. Um, and especially with the busy busy Christmas period." Um, yeah, it's just not worth it. But then also for me, I mean, I try to always look at the positives and it gives me a little bit of time now, not having to post to get ready for the new year um, and yeah. to get a few bits done in my spider room that I want to catch up on. So, But then also, so one of my uh, very good friends, Charlie, he, um, he works for Royal Mail and they don't actually get paid for striking and also it's not down to them to strike so the union said that they're striking and then they have to strike so he's losing loads of money this month by not working and even if he wanted to go into work he can't so it's, it's a mess and i feel sorry for them guys too especially coming up to christmas yeah absolutely and that's that's perhaps something that a lot of people don't realize and don't necessarily think about <laughs> sometimes no, in these, no. these sort, of, sort of situations at all um yeah, I think mean, that's yeah really important to sort of the highlight <laughs> kind of thing yeah. that. Oh yeah, yeah definitely. <clears throat> and stuff because you know sometimes we can be you know individually too too quick to get angry at everyone because something hasn't gone the way we want it or whatever. And, you know, okay. well I ordered this and I want it now <laughs> and the thing and life gets in the way sometimes. Uh, things things happen. Yeah. So and, uh, especially when it comes to with live animals, we've got to be prepared that. You know, you're going to say, actually, no, what we're not going to ship, and no. so we're not going to face these out because it's it's not worth risking it. And no, no. you know, massive respect to that to any anyone goes, you know what, not worth doing it <laughs> at the moment. We're going to hold off until better weather and things have been sort of res hopefully resolved. And I mean, just the weather now. I mean, it, just the weather now. Even if you're using the polystyrene box person heat pack, it's still just far too cold. And I mean. The heat packs that we use last 40 hours, so they've got a lot of time on them. Um, but it's, yeah, just not worth the risk, like you say. That's it. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, and I, I pretty much rarely mail order this time of year. Uh, anyway, one, because it's all like, well, it's a lot busier with the, the sort of Christmas deliveries and stuff, and, and it's just that bit colder. So, uh, I mean, there's that too, Chris. <laughs> I show it once a month. Sometimes, it's like, why? Well, I'm not going to mail order. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I think I think everybody should uh, sh should take note of that comment. So the spider shows for me, those are the best days. Um, 
best yeah. days of the year. So we've we've already booked on to all of the invert shows, uh, already booked on to the BTS and C's in January. Um, and I mean, I know sometimes for a lot of people it is a quite a bit of travel, but you don't pay postage, first of all. And second of all, shows the show prices. So 70% of the spiders that we take to the show on the day are actually cheaper on the day than they are online. So it is well worth a trip. And then also you get to pick your spider on the day. That's it. You get to actually look at it, choose which one you like. And there's the social aspect as well. You get to meet yeah. people, you get to talk to the, the sellers, you get, you know, if it's you, you know, you're thinking about getting, but when I know a bit more information, you're there on hand. Yeah, definitely. To, to answer those questions and yeah. stuff. And, and it's uh, for the traders as well, because I mean, a, a lot of my life is now taken up by tarantulas, and I, I absolutely love it. But I mean, like with, with my friends, them come in over and stuff, nobody actually cares. So it's nice to go to the side <laughs> of like minded people that take an interest. It's great. It's my friends all the time, and, and they're so used to it now. They're so used to it, but yeah, they're, they're not bothered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I'm the same, you know, in my work, and I work with animal people and stuff. Yeah. And after that, I'm like, yeah, I feel we're not interested in, <laughs> in that sort of stuff, kind yeah. of thing. Um, you know, some of them are, but yeah, definitely get the uh, the same sort of thing. So, that, and that's a great thing about the shows. And now that, you know, especially well, within the UK, there's shows up and down the country. Oh, everywhere, yeah. Pretty much, um, yeah, I go to, to most of them and stuff, and um, they're always good fun, always yeah. good fun, even the, you know, the last one that was at wasn't the busiest, it's not the biggest and stuff, but you know, it's still good to actually just go around and you know, see, see each other and uh, chat with each other. I did see somebody in the comments, um, asked when uh, Balfouria communals will be available, um. So I have actually successfully paired Balfouri and I have got the spoilings living with a female now. Um, I've actually found that when you remove the spoilings from the female early, they don't do as well and they grow really, really well with the female. The female will actually come out and kill the prey and then leave it for the uh, spoilings to eat and they grow a lot better that way. So I have actually got um Balfouri slings but they won't be available just yet i want to grow them to a nice size with the female uh, i'll probably save them for bts so i don't want to be pulling them out at say two centimeter one two centimeter i think they do a hell of a lot better when they're a little bit bigger and a little bit more sturdy and then plus for me feeding one tub opposed to a bunch of tubs is a lot better as well <laughs> i uh i can't imagine um so I think it's for anyone who perhaps never ordered or bought from you, but especially ordered online, um, often the sizes are actually a little bit bigger than what they say or what you put online. Yeah, yeah that's right. Actually, yeah. a little bit bigger, which is really, really nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I um, think we can do it. Yeah. Because cause I think, I mean, there's, there's some spiders now on the website, and I know that they're bigger than that, but until they're significantly bigger than that, then I'll just leave them at that size because I mean, yeah. you're going to be happy getting bigger. That's it. That's it. I mean, surely no one's ever complained about, hey, man, this is, you said two centimeters and this is four centimeters. Complain about that, sure. Although uh, there is actually some spiders available on the website currently that I do definitely need to update the size on. But again, that, you know, that's also a bonus of not being able to post at a minute. So I've got the time to go in there and... Yeah, and do some updates and stuff. Yeah, yeah, like, I'm going to post the theory that I left are considerably bigger <laughs> than what I've been doing. <laughs> so, did see, I think someone asked about uh, if you're going to have Panama in stock. Uh, I haven't got Panama in stock at the moment. Um, they could be coming in at some time but it's not any on order so i can't say um if you are looking for panama i know that the spider shop have just got some in um yeah. i mean i'm always happy if, if there's something that i haven't got or there's something that you're looking for i'm more than happy for you guys to send me an email or send me a message on my social media because if i know where you can get it i'll send you to them it's not a problem at all uh, do, 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 do. Uh, so long to next show <laughs> always feels like a long time but for me, like shows, especially we're going to most of them, it comes around so quickly sometimes as well. So it's not that uh, long. It's the, it's the end of January. 
end of January. Kicks off the show in a big, big way this season. It's a really oh, good show. He's a, he's a fantastic show. Yeah, it's one of my favourites, definitely. Hey, guy who has never been to an invert show in life so far, are they any fun? No, I no, say no. they're great fun. Yeah, definitely. I, if you haven't been to the show, yeah, I'm going to speak for the UK ones. Go to one. <laughs> Find your nearest one and go to it and stuff. And you'll be amazed at, you know, some of the prices there, people there. So absolutely great fun. Um, and it doesn't matter which, which one it is as well. They're, and they're all, you know, even the ones that are, you know, run by Invitation UK, they're all sort of slightly different to each other a little yeah. bit. So, um, and you've got things like the BTS, which is just huge. Uh, the BTS, so the BTS is the big one for us. I mean, it's the first ever spider show that I went to, and I must have only been about 14, 15 at the time. And I went there and I was mind blown. And at this time, I, I was in school and I have got my hair up in a bun, but I have got long hair. But back then, I didn't have the shave size, and my hair was just everywhere. I looked like sticking a dump, honestly, it looked like sticking a dump. And um, I went there and just stood in the queue. I was looking around, and I was like, Oh man, there's loads of people like me. I'm not so different. <laughs> that's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah, I but mean, the best is the best for us. We it's it's where it all started. It's the longest running UK show, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful day. You get so many great traders there. It's it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. No, it really, really is. Hey, Aaron. Hey, Reese. Hey, Jeremy. I've got a lot more people coming in. Nice. Hey, Jim. So, I've seen that um, Amy said, are we doing a Taunton show? Yep, we're doing a Taunton show. So any of the shows that are run by Invert Shows UK, uh, we're doing every single one of them. They're already booked on. So, yeah, we're doing them. I think we should be doing every UK show. There's a couple that I haven't booked yet, um, but we should be doing every one. I think there's 13 in total. We've got 10 booked so far, and I think we're going to do them all. So there's the no, AUS... Yep, and then there's the I can't say the word. You can say it, Phil. Uh, what's the one that we done on the fourth? What's it called? The Ento. Midlands Entomological Fair. That's it. I don't know why I can't say that second word. The Ento one. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> so, um, you're going to be doing because they do uh, two a year, don't they? You get doing yep. both both of theirs. So, what's that? Yep. April and December. Yeah. And stuff. Um, yeah, and then you got yeah the BTS, yes, yeah, AES. Um, hmm. There's, yeah, there's there's a fair few shows and stuff. So the only ones you don't do are the IHS shows. Yeah, so it's the um, it's the reptile ones. Uh, I, we have wanted to get onto them um, because, like I say, for us, it's not just going and necessarily trading. I mean, it's the days that I look forward to. You know, it's the shows are just the highlights of the year for me. <laughs> so we tried to do them all, but the IHS got to say, no, I can't stay. <laughs> <laughs> I was warned I was going to get a bit of stick. No. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to say it. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, you've lost me now. Oh, you've fully got me there. I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> hey, at Ramblings. So, uh, what have we got? Oh, yeah, Jeremy's plan to do a few of the shows. So that's cool. So, yeah, but in terms of the shows, um, when did you first start trading at the shows? Oh, I should have this written down. I mean, if my dad's watching, if you could send me a message so I can give you a definite answer. See, my memory isn't as good as his. Um, but I remember, so we were just, I was doing lots of breeding. Um, we was never really looking to trade. But we'd always attended the BTS show, and it was coming up to the BTS, and obviously we were going, as we have done for years. I've been going to the BTS since I was about 14 years old, every year. And it was coming up to the show, and I said to my dad, I was like, we got quite a bit of stuff for that we could sell. I mean, we could probably just get a table and put it on, and then that will pay for us to get more spiders on the day. Um, and that day, we had a really, really good day. It was a really fun day. Met a lot of nice people. It just slowly came from there. So I want to say that was three years ago. And uh, Dad, as I say, if you could message me, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, he knows. But there was no brand. It was no nothing. I just put it down as my name, Luke Hughes. And yeah, it's was, it was brilliant. It really was good. Yeah, I think I first probably saw you guys as then as Sparse Wires. I think last year, well, the first show 
after all like the lockdowns and everything, the first show back, which was the yeah. Bristol show. Yeah. And I hadn't heard of you guys at all then and stuff, but mm. all that show all I heard was like, everyone going, You need to check out that sand. <laughs> you need to check it like <laughs> so, like everyone's like, but the spines look really good and you know, really reasonable prices over there. <laughs> and like literally there was like you know, one of the buzzers of shows like check out Sparse Waves. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is a wicked start. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that was the first day. Yeah. And I mean, so next year, I should mention as well. So next year, I've booked uh, two tables for every show, but for the BTS, I've actually booked four tables. Yeah. Um, and that's because already for the BTS, I'm already holding Spiders back specifically for that day. Oh, days in the tables that show is this year. Well, um, yeah, you definitely should. Dave. Awesome definitely should. That'd be a busy, that'd be a busy stand, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think what you'd need, Dave, is I think you'd need a couple of helpers. So while you do the talking and meeting people, people can actually be taking the money for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I say it might be long wait times. Yeah, yeah. And it is always far too tempting actually to come back with more than you than you should. Oh yeah, <laughs> awesome. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. it always is. So, but that's, that is part of the fun. That's part yeah. of the fun. Uh, if you're worried about spending too much, maybe leave your card at home as you would do on a <laughs> night out. Take a certain amount of cash and say to yourself that today is going to cost me this amount. And if you come home with any, that's a bonus. <laughs> yeah, but that's always a, always a good one. So Harry asks if you plan on getting any Sturmy on the website. Um, so I've got the Blondie and the Apophysis on the website currently. Um, I don't have Sturmy yet, although I have paired a female and she's starting to look good. But until this spiderlings, there's nothing I can say. Um, I might get some in. Um, I'm trying to breed them myself first. So, so obviously, yeah, do you buy some stuff and boat? You trying to breed as much of stuff on the website, homebred by you and your dad? Yeah, so so we do buy a lot of stuff in. I think I think most stalls are having to buy stuff in. Um, it it would be ideal if I could produce all of our own stuff. Um, and we do we do produce a lot. We've always got breedings going on. Um, but yeah, we we do have to buy stuff in. Yeah, but that that's that's where the excitement comes for us is is the breeding. I'm working on a few things at the minute. I'm not going to say. Um, there's one that I'm really excited about, and it's not came off yet, but it's looking good, and I'm not going to jinx it. <laughs> so yeah, there's there's a few coming up. I think Jeremy's planning on going into uh, credit card debt next week. <laughs> yeah, <that's dangerous. laughs> uh, if your whole spider's back for that day, and they shed the skin on their back, uh, and then they get back up, <laughs> they get back frequently. I'm not. Yeah, I'm. I'm I'm not too sure. What do you mean by that, DJ? Maybe, maybe making one of his jokes potentially. <laughs> so, hey, Russell. Uh, that man's asked, "What is your number one favorite tea?" Oh, okay. First of all, it's a very easy answer. There is not a number one. Um, now it always changes for me. Um, I would say at the moment my favorite genus is Persilophyria. Um, I'm really, really enjoying them. I've got I've got 13. There's 14, isn't there? That are in in the hobby. It was a 13. I'm only I'm only sure on Persilophyria Smithy, and I'm a little bit careful where I'll buy the Persilophyria from. Um, but I'm really enjoying working with them. But a number one favourite tarantula, I couldn't tell you. Although, actually, not species of tarantula, but my number one favourite tarantula that I have at home um, is actually a Gramostola rosea. It is rosea now, isn't it? There's no more yes. pot theory? Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, um, yeah. Like yeah, it's all rosea now, and the uh, is now just uh, the junior synonym. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. So, uh, yeah, so my favourite spider I have at home is a female Rosea, and I've had her since I was 11 years old as an adult. Um, so she's around about... I've, I've owned her for about 16 years now, and, and I had her as an adult. So out of all of them, yeah, she means the most to me because that's where it all started. And she looks absolutely amazing still. She looks in great neck. So, yeah, my favourite spider that I own would be that, but it's not my favourite species. Yeah, no, I think that... That goes for a lot of people as well sometimes. <laughs> like, you know, have the stuff I have, you know, one of my favourites is my little album. <laughs> so yeah. It's always out and about and I see it all the, all the time, but 
I love my pokies and stuff. And then well, today, my uh, my briefies done a done its first successful mock with me. So that's like yay. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, there's so many to narrow down. I there is no way I could pick one. I don't think I could ever fully give an answer in my favorite. There's there's no. just too many, and that's that's what's great about the hobby. Absolutely, absolutely. So, James, uh, yeah, what do you enjoy working with more? Species that are simple to produce or challenging species, old or new uh, world? So, I it's the most rewarding for me when I breed a harder to breed species. Um, the when I've done the Megaphobema robustum, uh, that was up there with one of my favorites, and I have also successfully produced Sturmy as well before. That's up there with one of my favorites. Um, do I prefer old world or new world? Very, very easy answer for me. Old world. <laughs> and yeah, added on, uh, was it yeah, breeding wise to to his question. So yeah, they're your favorite sort to work with in terms of breeding. Um, in breeding, I don't really have um a preference. Um, I really, really want to produce Metallica. That's the next on my list. That's the one that I really, really want to do. They've been my bogey species, so that's one that I really want to work with. Um, but in terms of breeding, old world, new world, doesn't really matter. Um, as I say, the two that I'm most proud of are the Robustum and the Sturmy, and they're both new world species. But for me, as a trench to keeper, I personally prefer old world. Um, and that's simply because I don't really enjoy being itchy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Harry's uh, paid for a Pandinus Imperator today. Nice, very nice. Awesome yeah. scorpions. Uh, Aaron's on the look for trapdoors. Do you do anything with trapdoor spiders at all? Uh, not yet. So um, I am very much primarily trenchers, although I have started dabbling into some of the trues. Um, the trapdoor is definitely something that I would like to work with. I don't actually own any yet, but I know there is a few about. I know that Spider Shop has some. Uh, I'm pretty sure Andy Orms at So Many Legs also has some. So there is a few about at the moment for the trapdoors. Yeah, I have, they're not something I've ever ever worked with um, as of yet. Mm. Um, so, um, mainly because I don't know where I stick them. <laughs> so I've got enough tubs of dirt in some ways. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so with, uh, with certain things, uh, but they are awesome looking. Are awesome looking spiders. I personally like a tub of dirt because if it's a tub of dirt and the spider's nowhere to be seen, I know it's happy. <laughs> That's true. It's very, very uh, well, yeah, Jeremy's got got some trapdoors at the moment. Very nice. So, well, roughly how you know, just roughly how many species are you currently working with? <laughs> at the top of your head, <laughs> it's a very good question. Um, oh. I, I honestly, honestly could not say. Uh, uh, that's a great question. More than 100, but I don't know. I don't know. So um, more than I mean, species, yeah, and, yeah. and then for individuals, that's going to be a lot more than that. Yeah, individuals. Um, I mean, I need to try and do a bit of a stock take soon. Um, but, I mean, with my own collection... And obviously the stuff that I have available on the website. The absolute minimum is probably three thousand. It's the absolute minimum. Um yeah. And I mean the thing is, because it's also my hobby and because I'm a hobbyist, like when I've got stuff for sale, if I don't actually own that species, I keep some. <laughs> so okay. I I've got um so I actually where I'm living at the moment. So I've got my own designated spider room, uh, but now that's almost full. So I've got six racks in there with, with a corner and um, I can fit another couple in. And then my dad's got a load at his place as well. Uh, but I've been thinking to myself lately and I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to give up my bedroom. So I'm going to have a spider room, a second spider room, but in the second spider room would just be my own personal collection. And I'm just gonna put my bed in the front room and sleep in my front room and just treat it like a studio because I don't need a bedroom to sleep in. What do I need a bedroom to sleep in? <laughs> I don't need that. I'll just sleep in the front room, no problem. <laughs> I'm happy doing that. Most spiders is a happier me. <laughs> uh, so and I think that's what's 
great is that yeah you're not just as you are a true hobbyist at heart oh. as well stuff which you know does mm. does come off that like, your passion for for the spiders and yeah and stuff but i mean you know for a lot of people they probably think well how the hell you know how long does it take you to feed and do the maintenance on the sort of three thousand spiders <laughs> oh no most of those are going to be things in little yeah little tiny ones. but you know that you know I mean, my little lot, you know, it'll take me maybe a couple of hours or whatever, but obviously, you know, sometimes you like, you know, you like to look at them and stuff and this and the other, but yeah, with sort of 3,000, mm. how long does it take you to do all the maintenance? I mean, it is probably more than that. I don't, I really don't know. So obviously I've got to give a massive shout out to my dad because he has a hell of a lot at his house. Um, I probably have more at mine, but he does have a hell of a lot at his house. Um, and my brothers also help my dad for uh, pocket money which is great um yeah. and i do also need to give a special shout out to my mom um because if my mum wouldn't have been crazy enough to let me fill my bedroom as a kid with spiders um, and also let my dad have a separate room and a shed in the back garden with spiders uh we wouldn't be where we are today uh, and also uh, my mom does my posting for me so i pack up all the orders I do all the boxes, but uh, after my mum picks up my brothers from school, she'll stop by mine to pick up the parcels and uh, post them at the post office. So, yeah, without the people that have around me, my family, it, it wouldn't be possible. Um, but going back to the question of how long does it feed, uh, honestly, I should probably time myself. I don't obviously do everything in one day or two days. So so every day is a spider day, especially Monday to Friday. Um, I'll do feeding every day. And that's how I go about it. Um, but it's a hell of a long time. So a lot of the time when it comes to doing stuff like the spiderlings, we use maggots to feed them because it's so much quicker. And it's like your live streams and Scott's live streams. A lot of the time what I'll do when I'm feeding the spiderlings is I'll put the streams on and I'll just yeah. sit in front of the TV listening to you guys feeding pots of spiders. Um, so it's really not too bad. But what I would say is it would be very laborious and hard to do if you didn't enjoy it because it is constant it's constant feeding constant work and then not only that i mean feeding like the spiderlings in their little pots you know they don't stay little for very long so then it's a mass rehousing um so i've caught up on my feeding um i've got pretty much everything done within the last week so the beginning of this week will actually be a big rehouse um project so i've probably got three four hundred that need uh, upgrades this week which again is good because I'm not have not having the first part of my day taken up by posting gives me yeah. a lot more time to gives you that time to to do all that sort of stuff and be like yeah oh I need to catch up on this yeah uh, and there's always yeah. stuff to catch up on yeah <laughs> oh so no man's asked uh, do you have any spiders that you have to think twice about for opening their enclosure <laughs> um, to be totally honest no. Um, so I, it depends what species of tarantula you're dealing with. So there's some species of tarantula which I give respect to. So I treat them differently and I'll interact with them differently than I do other spiders. Uh, there's no spiders that put the fear of God in me anymore. Um, I forget, I think because I've been doing it for so long, you know, even when you do get the odd one bolt or escape, there's none that scare me. However, there is ones that I will be a little bit more cautious with when dealing with. But I can honestly say I haven't had the spider scare me in a very long time. Um, the centipedes, when I first started working with centipedes, they they scared me a little bit. But again, once I think once you understand something and you've learned yeah, about yeah, it, you yeah. lose the fear. You lose the fear completely. But yeah. it's a respect. I think respect is a strong word. I mean, if you're dealing with something like I say, like the Gramostella rosea or Gramostella pulchra or an albot, you know, you can have the odd one, which is a little bit crazy, but they're a lot easier to deal with. Whereas if you're looking at rehousing, for example, I don't know, a sea lividus, which is a cobalt blue for some of you, you know that you've got to be a little bit more careful and probably use a bigger catch cup for that one, just in case. It's all about respect with the uh, more the more old world sort of, I wouldn't say aggressive. I don't think any spider is aggressive because they all need to be provoked. But the more defensive species, yeah, you got to be a little bit more careful. No, it's, and it's for me, it's you know, yeah, taking into consideration, you know, right, there's going to be more defensive, you know, they're going to be more scared, yeah, you know, they're scared of us, <laughs> kind of thing, you know, oh, yeah. predator essentially coming yeah. down on them. 
and stuff. And when you go start looking at that, you, you're like, oh, okay. You, you start thinking about things differently. Yeah, definitely. Kind of thing, and you know, not to go chasing around. That's why that's decided to to go for a bit of a wonder kind <laughs> of thing. Wait for it to to sort say so because at the end they they're scared and they're kind of freaking out really. Yeah. And stuff so that, and again, you know, for me, my you know, obviously when people have like the very defensive, you know, OBTs or Kidabrakis or whatever, and it's like, well, normally actually give a bit of a larger enclosure or whatever, and actually it calms down. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I mean, it's much rather going to run and hide yeah. than it is to defend itself. Because, I mean, if you yeah. think about it, that's that's a spider defending itself. And, I mean, you know, in the wild, if it's getting provoked to that point, it's life or death for the spider, really. So... Is if, you, yeah, if, they've got, if they've got the perfect setup, a lot of the time they're not too bad. You do get the exception, but I think watching Dave's oh, video yeah. is really quite insightful and in how he works with his spiders because definitely it, it, it's, it's interesting to see how he does things a little bit differently with other spiders. But as he says, and I was watching his video on the uh, Mark Caffelli Gigas recently, rehousing them, and he didn't have a problem with any of them. So it's just how you go about it, and it's like, and it's like Dave says, you know, just stay calm, trust your ability, and and work to your ability. Don't look at how maybe I might do something or someone else might do it and go, but I need to do it like that. If you're not as confident, do it whatever way you feel comfortable. What works for you and what you feel comfortable doing. Yeah. So there's there's no real kind of right way of doing it. As you know, the right way is the way that works. Um for you and your your spider whatever species that may be and stuff um well, amy's looking for a dream tea the uh h chiliensis because i think that's a good luck thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> very few and far between there i have actually got one um i had i had a female years ago and they're really really cool spiders just i don't want to say they're inquisitive but they almost are because every time i used to take the lid off my female she was straight wandering out um, yeah, I've never kept the species, but I certainly hear that a lot from people that have kept oh. or do keep them. Like, you know, I that, thought I was doing something wrong because I was like, "Why don't you just chill out, man? I've given you a hide and everything. You've got everything you need. And every time I open it, I'll be coming out." And um, they were really, really cool species. Um, I have actually got one, and I got it in a mystery mystery box. So I won it in a raffle at one of the spider shows, and every tub in the mystery box just had a question mark on the top. And one of them has grown out that much now where, yeah, it's a chilenensis. So I was quite nicely surprised by that. That weren't a bad one to get. I don't no, no, know no. if you ever put the box together didn't know what they were or they just wanted to make it a mystery mystery. But, <laughs> yeah, the chilenensis are, are, are a really cool spider, actually. Hey, Ken, so he's asked, how long have you had spiders? Uh, so I bought my first when I was 11 years old. Um, I'm now 20. Well, I'm going to be 28 soon. Um, so how long is that? <laughs> 17 years? <laughs> is that 17? Yeah, almost 17 years. Yeah, oh, it's not I'm just gonna run to the toilet very, very quickly because I'm fussed, then, but I will be back ASAP. <laughs> no worries, no worries. <laughs> so, for people who perhaps didn't catch at the beginning, while looks just to uh, run to Lou, um, he's gonna be doing a bit of a giveaway of a undetermined value mystery box. Um, so it's open to people in the UK. All you have to do is make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel. Go and follow him on Instagram, which I'll put the link in the chat. And then send him a message on Instagram, uh, basically saying that you've done that. And whether you want something like a beginner box or just a mystery box uh, type thing. Um, obviously, it won't be shipped until uh, the new year when the weather's better and... Uh, Hopefully, um, so there'll be no more sort of raw mail strikes. That hopefully uh, that all gets resolved and stuff. And uh, once the sort of basically the, the sh sort of shipping climate's much much better. And I think I say it's open to people in the UK. Can't ship overseas. Um, but if you are overseas and you would like to enter, and if you win, uh, you can then gift uh, the prize to someone of your choice within the UK. Um, that is possible for anyone out, out of the UK. I know uh, DJ did ask about that. So, um, so whilst we're when when um, for Luke just to pop back, um, hi to all the people that are new uh, to my channel. Welcome. So, uh, 
for anyone who doesn't know, my name is Phil. So uh, that, I keep various, various uh, invertebrates, and then I am a zookeeper in the UK Zoo, uh, heading up an invertebrate and reptile section. So, um, so, and also get your various questions in uh, for Luke. So, uh, let's really, really uh, sort of test him out and stuff. So, yeah, I do love questions. We've got another one here. Do you also breed your feeders? Um, so I'm working on doing that at the moment. Um, so I've got the buyer in. I do need to pick up some of the uh, the bilateralists, is it? The red runners? Um, yeah, red runners, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm working on breeding them now. Yeah. So me and my dad both got a couple kilograms of each. Um, and we just got them set up at the minute producing. And we're not feeding any off yet. So yeah. eventually, yeah. I'd, eventually, the aim would be if we could have it fully self-sustaining, then that would be brilliant. Well, Reese is going to kick his family out and make it into a spider house. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, every spider keeper has a Luke in their collection, a spider upside down in their enclosure, the name Luke Skywalker. <laughs> I have had, I've had that a lot. Yeah, Luke, I am your father. Yeah, I've got it a lot. A lot. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh. Hey Chris, that's two weeks of work next week from Wednesday. He rehouses around 40. I think that's a lot. 300 is like a whole collection plus a bit more lots of work. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, have, I have said to my dad, because he's breaking up for um, Christmas soon, so I've said to him, yeah. I mean, the problem is, is the rehousing, I can get through that really quickly. The laborious part is drilling holes. Because oh. yep. if you think I've got 300 to rehouse, and let's just say, argument sake, they're going from swing pots into deli cups. And I need to put five holes in one deli cup. So how much is that? That's 15,000 holes. And after I've done them holes, because they'll have sharp edges on the inside, I sit there with a blade and, oh, yeah, I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to think about that part yet. <laughs> I mean, look, that's it. You know, some of us, you know, go, we get kind of tired of doing that to, Five tubs, let alone sort yeah. of three hundred plus tubs yeah. or whatever. You're like, oh, I mean, there's, so definitely, there's definitely parts of the uh, hobby such as that that are laborious. Doing the actual spiders, rehousing the spiders, I really enjoy that. I, I enjoy everyone. It doesn't even matter if I've done hundred. I really enjoy it. But yeah. the holes are. Ah. There we go. I think they hit the nail on the head. There, most spiders are own defensive for a reason. Understand that, and you're on to a winner. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely, completely agree with that. Yeah, uh, hey, Leah. No worries, don't never be sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, Dave. Yeah, I, I use a Dremel to uh to drill my pots. Um, and in the sling pots, it's not too bad because I can punch the holes in it really, really quickly. Um, but yeah, I'm not gonna lie, my dad does do a lot of the drilling. <laughs> my dad normally gets the, the rubbish jobs. <laughs> Uh, my emerald roaches are doing fantastically that they they keep explode, exploding in numbers in me i've sold so many this year and it hasn't made a dent in my colony <laughs> Stuff. And babies everywhere or nymphs everywhere all the time new nymphs are being born daily it seems and stuff like eventually i'm gonna have to end up splitting the colony up into multiple colonies um or at least into a second make at least two colonies out of them because they're outgrowing it no matter i keep on average i'm selling like what 10 tubs of five at each show mm. for the past few shows um has made a dent at all <laughs> um you know there's always and there's just there's probably got at least a few hundred uh little tiny nymphs in, in the colony Hopefully they'll be growing up for the uh, for seas to have more emerald roaches. Haven't they? They've done really, really yeah, well. Really, yeah, yeah. One, it, it was yeah. It just took time, and then as soon as I don't have don't do anything really that special with them um, mm. at all. Like you know, my what I've got. I mean, compared to like how Dave set his up, you know, Dave set up a lovely, basically zoo display. Yeah, really nice and close. So I was like, oh man, <laughs> I want to do that. So, you know, I could easily do that, but it's just space. Mm. 
don't mind that. It's working for you. The way you get it. I don't mind going in there and they're, you know, flooding the place with, with nymphs. Yeah. <laughs> so, if, it's yeah. bro- if it's not broken, don't fix it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's tough. Um, anyhow, I mean, I, I would certainly prefer to look at those in closer to mine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, mine, they're, they're breeding like, like nobody's business. Like, to the point that I, you know, they can, you know, if they weren't so tough in terms of access sense, and they'd probably be not, that's why I would keep reducing the price for them. Yeah. I'm now saying them like £25 for five, and for like normally for fairly large nymphs, nearly almost adults, mm. <laughs> sort of thing, because it's just like, what, so many. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, oh, that's a good one. But, uh, do you see genre packs in the future? For example, there's a baboon or a pokey package. Um, yeah. Um, so I will give some uh, give a little something away. So um, one of the extra tables at the BTS is purely for mystery boxes, and um, there will be some packs there, such as the first of the Feria, for the first, uh, um, yeah. So it's something that we're working on, um, and yeah, there's a couple of things I was thinking of doing packs already. Um, there's a few that I've got a few of, but yeah. It's something that we're looking for, for definitely. But then also, I know a few other places like TSS do it and stuff. And, you know, I quite like, I know they've already got the pair of first the box. So I've sort of let them do their thing. But there's a couple of sets that I want to do for sure. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Uh, <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah. She's got, become a lot calmer since watching today's video. I think a lot of people do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dave, Dave's been. Brilliant for the hobby. Yeah, he's helped a hell of a lot of people out. Yeah. Steve, so have you got Sarah Capama as a species but Briquette? Briquette. Um, I haven't. Um, I've actually only got one species of Sarah Capama at the minute. Um, and it's one that not many people have. I picked it off, up off Ray Gabriel. I picked up slings off him a few years ago. Uh, it's a Sarah Capama species cruces. Um, and I really don't think there's many about at all. That's the only one I have for now. Oh, actually, no, is it Cruces or is it? No, it's not. No, it's not Cruces. It's Sarika Palma Rio Sereno, I think. These are spiders at my dad's house, so I, I see them <laughs> a few <laughs> far between. <laughs> no, no, it's uh, Rio Sereno, yeah. But no, unfortunately, not. Right. At Ramblings, uh, yeah, but when feeding maggots are hundreds of slings, do you just pop one in and move on, or do you wait to see if they take it? Um, so it depends. So I have got quite quick over the years. So what I'll do if I open up the tub and I can see that the spider's not fat or hasn't just molted, I will chuck the maggot in, put the lid on, and be done with it. Um, and a lot of the time, say if I can go through slings, for example, and I'm feeding and feeding and feeding them. If I pick the sling and it's fat, then I won't feed it. I'll just give it water and save it till next time. Um, but I I sort of do so a lot of them I keep in tubs of fifteen so ready ready for the shows so I keep them in tubs of fifteen so after I've done them all as I put them back in a the tub I'll have a quick look and then when I'm doing <laughs> when I'm doing some of the bigger stuff so the stuff in the deli cups what I'll do is I'll feed them and the spiders that take the food will get put to one side and the ones that don't take the food will get put to the other side. And the ones that have taken the food will go back on the shelf, and the ones that haven't will go on the front of the shelf. I'll go in there the next day, and if they still haven't taken the food, I'll remove it. And then I'll leave them to one side, knowing that they haven't eaten, so they'll be first to be fed next time. So that's sort of how I do it. Yep. If I watched everyone eat, it would take me a long, long time. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Ooh, let's get one. If you guys are spiders or, what, or any other invert, what would you be? I'm going to let you answer that first, Bill. That's always a difficult one. <clears throat> I've always kind of said scorpion. Mm. Like scorpion, because they, I'm a metalhead, and they look fairly metal and stuff, but, you know, they're really good, I would say, in some ways, they're like real, you know, they may look aggressive and stuff, but they're, you know, they're real, sometimes big softies, <laughs> sort of thing, like some of them. Um, I don't know that stuff as they're like, you know, I might go out looking, you know, all kind of hardened metal head and this that the other, but I don't know, well, I'm I'm just a big softy. <laughs> 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 uh, 
<laughs> the reason why I said you first is I'm struggling to think of an answer. Yeah, I know. Mean... <laughs> oh, God, what can I relate myself to? Ooh, that's tough. Um, a cockroach. <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm gonna say a cockroach. Yeah, you can't get rid of them. <laughs> uh, I might be like misunderstood or something. Or <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah, a bit mi misunderstood. Yeah, um, and um, yeah, seemingly bumproof. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> say that. <laughs> I'm gonna Sorry, fire man. that question back actually. Um, and, and what what um, what animal? Oh, was it animal? No, it wasn't animal, was it? A spider, any, any or other bug, so any other invert. So, so what, what bug would you be? So, perhaps anyone in everyone in chat, perhaps get thinking, you know, what bugs would they be? So, Dave feels his arm's going to fall off after doing putting holes in a thousand sling pots. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, know, I know the feeling, Dave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Dubaiers love, love, love oranges. They go absolutely mental for it. Uh, ooh, very nice, Jeremy. Jeremy's had a nice, successful hatch of some red fang wandering spiders. Amazing. That is, uh... See, there's some of the true spiders I really quite like. They're, they're really quite spicy, aren't they? I, yeah, they interest me quite a lot. A lot of the stuff that Jeremy's been working with and now following him on Instagram, yeah, he's really caught my eye with the trues. And even my dad, I think my dad bought his first true at the last show. So, yeah. Trues yeah, <laughs> yeah um, I don't know if he's on the chat. I believe he's watching. He's probably doing what I do at the moment. He's probably... I, I would guess where he is now. I reckon he's at home, stood in the kitchen, feeding spiders with his phone popped up against the wall, watching the live stream. So, yeah. Okay. Do you have any Asian forest scorpions in the collection? I do, yeah. So, um, we had a bunch in um, to sell, and I've kept two. And the two I've kept, unfortunately, for whatever reason, I'm not sure, but they were missing their stinger. Um, okay. so I to keep those, and now those are my personal pets. So, yeah, I've got two. Well, they reckon I'm a uh, grammar style of pulchra. Yeah, that's like not, a, not bad, but, uh, really, You know, I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> Dave would be a dragonfly. Dragonfly? That's quite elegant, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dragonfly. Sure, listen to the band's got, I've seen Scorpions live. Awesome yeah. band. Um, that man would be a hissing cockroach. So, uh, see if asked this age old one. Would you rather fight a horse sized duck or a hundred duck sized horses? Oh man, that's really hard to get my head around. Would I rather fight a horse sized duck or a hundred duck sized horses? <laughs> Oh man, I suppose you'd probably just take the one, don't you? The horse sized duck, I think. A hundred? Oh man, they could get you from all angles. At least you've only got to look in the place. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, horse sized duck. That's what I'd fight. <laughs> uh, Leah's going with a hundred duck sized horses. <laughs> so, um, and, uh, Reese would be a ver Caribbean versi colour, so he can shoot poop. Yeah, that's a good one, also. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Yeah, Amy would be a pokra. Yeah, and that man has gone for duck sized horses. Yeah. Uh, so. That's we good. Ooh. <coughs> Jeremy would be it. Harris is tubby small and likes to hide most of the time. That's an attitude that doesn't suit him. Yeah. That's good. Well, guys, you, you, yeah, these guys in the comments are doing a lot better than we have, Phil, I think. That's <laughs> Jeremy. <laughs> Yeah, praying mantis, get yeah, everyone colourful fret poses and, and annoying me live, quick and efficient. Life. I can see that. I can see that. Chris is a mosquito because he's an annoying oh, bastard. That is, that's the most accurate one. That, that is yeah. it. God, I totally agree with you, actually. Chris. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> uh, 
anybody's ever had the pleasure of meeting Chris at the shows, I think you can sort of see the correlation there. <laughs> I think I think a lot of people would agree. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Chris is doing If you weren't a scorpion, what, what type would you be in? Like, oh my god. Uh, easy. The Emperor, because of the name. Emperor Scorpion, yeah. Yeah, Emperor for me. Yeah. Hey. In terms of the name, in terms of like the scientific name, I'm really partial to the name Swamadami. Yeah, yeah, Swamadami. <laughs> yeah. The guy from Swamadami. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like, maybe that. I don't think possibly. You used to have one years ago. Awesome, awesome scorpions. Uh, I'm really liking these questions. Good question. What's your favorite sh show venue and why? That's a really good Yes, one. easy. That's for me. Yeah. The BTS is for me. Is that's where it all started for us, and it's just something different about the BTS. It, it, it's the first show I attended, Serena. Um, it's the first one we traded at, and it's just the committee and how the shows run. It's just a really, really amazing show. Yeah, for me, that's the top. There's, there's nothing close. I don't think the BTS is amazing. However. Um, I am looking at going over to a couple of shows in Europe, so that might change. But the BTS for sure, yes, amazing, amazing show. I I think if you're limited to what shows you can go to, I think the BTS needs to be the highest priority, personally. And, you know, um, I'm saying BTS is my favourite show, um, and one of the biggest reasons is because it's always either on or the weekend just after my birthday. It's my birthday show. Amazing. So, so yeah, money. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We're like, what do you want to do with birthday? Money for the BTS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Um, and yeah, every few years it is on my birthday as well. So it's like even, even more so. Like, right, I'm having my birthday by the BTS. <laughs> well, actually, and also, so the BTS is actually my hometown show. So the venue is actually five minutes from where I live. So it's also great the night before. So uh, a few of us go out the night before, and anybody's welcome to join. We can get a few of us together. Uh, but I know a lot of the bars in Leamington. <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah, come come to BTS. We'll um we'll put something out there, and we'll get a few of us together, go out for a few drinks, and talk spider stuff before the day. Yeah. There we go. Uh, uh, night, Amy. Chase for up and up. Uh, Good night, Amy. Uh, if you go to to Madonna, I will take a free meal one with me. Makes a burger, but always use a different restaurant. Hey, dear DJ, <laughs> he knows what he's doing. He's a smart guy. <laughs> hey, Lewis. Uh, oh, there we go. Stephen B. The cricket that escapes in the house and chirps, so he can never find me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a great answer. That, that was a great <laughs> question, and there's been some great answers. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, Lewis would be a Nevo White Eye. Nice. Uh, Lewis says she has a. A sensible question for you. Okay, this is that's really already up. not sensible. <laughs> and law, okay. But I'll answer it. Yeah. it we'll, we'll All night, Matt Man. Cheers for joining. Uh, yep. This is irritating as millions of mosquitoes. But also, Chris is a, a very, very handy person to know. Yeah, he's a jack of all trades, that guy. Very nice guy. Lovely guy. Oh. Uh, uh, oh, how is us about swam? Yeah, swam and dummies are the largest uh, scorpions. Well, they were last time I looked. Are they even in the hobby? They're not really in the hobby, are they? Uh, I haven't seen them in the UK for a long. I mean, the best people are to be like Tim Bass or Dale Strong, really. They they probably know. So I remember them being has... about a few a few years ago. Some being about, but whether they were actually that species or not, I don't know. Mm. I I think a lot of them were missold, maybe. Years ago, a lot of scorpions were were being missold all the time and stuff. Yeah. There was all all sorts. I mean, I remember at some of the zoo zoo conferences I go to, especially the invert ones. There was a lot of questions around certain scorpions or whatever. So certain ones were even in like the UK, even within zoos and stuff. Yeah. And um, like years ago, you could get oh. was it the um, what was called the red claw at the time, the Pandinus uh, cavermanus. Mm. Um, I was often being told that, and actually, there was a lot of people that reckon that actually they were just imperators that were a different locale. 
yeah, and stuff. And um, yeah, I think I said unless you count the individual hairs, then you can't ID them. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, wow, yeah, yeah, he's going to be doing that. Probably not. What? Ah, so this is Lee's serious question. How many spices would it take to tickle an elephant? Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to, that question is so bored. I mean, what type of spiders are we talking? I mean, if we're talking some of the ferrophones, so maybe not many, but then elephant skin's quite tough. So would it tickle? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it depends on what what part of the elephant you're trying to tickle as well. Ah, indeed. Yeah. That's it's a very good We've got to narrow that down. I mean, oh, it's, well, fairly, uh, it's fairly sensitive. <laughs> sort of in certain areas. <laughs> so, that's it. Yeah, yeah. What spiders? How big are the spiders? Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't think that's a that's an interesting one. Very ah, uh, ticklish. Uh, I wouldn't have thought they thought. Oh, okay, okay. So maybe not many then. Maybe not many. No, Farfoys are. Really, some uh, might do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 one. Very close, though. <laughs> That'll give you more than a tickle, Jesus. Or a, uh, a peamy. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't there's a couple around there uh, for the, I'm guessing for the Swammer Dammies. Very few and far between. Hey, Matt. It's oh, nice. Yeah, it's very ticklish. It's nice to see, like you were saying, like about um, Tim doing some work with the scorpions, and I know that Dave's working on the the emperors. Um, it's good to see because there's really I can't even I can't think of many bar them that are actually actively trying to produce um, captive bred scorpions. Actually, there's not no yeah. There's a few people doing it, but both of them are doing it obviously yeah, in a much larger way and stuff, which is needed. Yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely needed. Yeah. Um, I mean, pretty much all of the scorpions that you see are all plucked out of the world, 95% 90, at the moment, isn't it? So getting some capture breeding with them done is, yeah, vital. Yeah. Yes, absolutely, absolutely needed. I, I mean, the problem is that they're not necessarily difficult to actually breed. They just take time. Yeah. And so, um, and so I've, like, I've, I've bred, yeah, in at work. Got um some baby uh nebos. Um I haven't bred those, they're they're captive born. Mm. So but I've got I, I do have a pair, so once they're off the backs and stuff and the females had a bit of a rest and stuff on and look at actually sort of pairing them up. Mm. And so I've, um because yeah, most of the scorpions you buy are yeah, are well caught. Yeah. Uh Russell's asked, do you try to have pubic hairs? <laughs> Uh, technically, no. But what they have is worse than pubic hairs on the uh, new worlds. Yeah, if my pubic hairs itched like eticating hair, then oh god, yeah, it would be a tough, tough life. <laughs> it's, it's come about somewhere about someone saying that you you can sex pokies by something like a males have pubic hairs, and you're like, what? What are you yeah. on about? <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's something like that. So I really hope that who was saying that was joking around. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Empire is trying to breed a load of captive bred scorpions. That'd be cool. So, mm -hmm. in part of problem though, that so many so many schools need revision in terms of their taxonomy. I've been revised and stuff, and that some of them are really difficult to actually uh, ID properly. Sort of thing. And Chris says the uh, whole. Uh, Trying to pubic hairs will never get old. <laughs> yeah, it's because it's very slow to reproduce. They don't produce many either, do they? Uh, I, I can tell you now, mo most of the uh, emperor scorpions that are being sold are wild caught. Yeah, definitely. There's very few people that are actually uh, are breeding them. I mean, you must know this. Well, I'd imagine you probably do. But it's like, yeah, they used to be so cheap and now they're so expensive. And they're not obviously being plucked from the wild as they were before. So mm -hmm. what is that? Have they put some restrictions on them? Well, they're, they're CITES. 
Oh, they sell it to you now. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, you you scan for like a tenner. Oh yeah, I remember. I I had um, I had <laughs> a massive tub under my bed full of them, and they're so good to work with. Like I used to sit there and feed them locusts with the tongs, and they'd just take them out of the tongs, and they were wicked, and they were actually handleable at the time. Um, yeah, they're such such good species. They're they're probably the best species of scorpion to own, but now also the most expensive, or up there at least. Uh, some, some of the old wife sales in the hobby never get old. <laughs> That's a very true sound of me. So, to do it. Who's asking any sex uh, baking Metallica from Coloration? So, I have heard that on the abdomen, um, as they're as they're maturing or they're close to maturity i've heard if it's real bold white then it is more likely female but for me i only ever sex uh tarantulas from a malt so unless i've had a malt to confirm it then it's insects for me um, but i have heard you can yeah so yeah uh, and then what have we got? Mine is mine is active bread and it's what? <laughs> active <laughs> bread. <laughs> and Mark's calcode is currently inactive bread. Okay. <laughs> uh yeah, Harry, yeah, yeah. So I know a few years ago I remember when they were just completely banned from export. And so, of course, yeah, I used to get emperors for, yeah, so I've had emperors for a tenner. Mm -hmm. They were mm -hmm. so common. I, I, you know, I used to have, have a few, and then I was in that stage, was like, well, they're so common, I don't really them want them. And then everyone does it and go, ah, these are actually really cool, and I can't get them all. They're now really expensive. So yeah, it was like, learn, learn from that. Of like, just because mm -hmm. stuff at the moment is really, really common and really, really cheap. In a few years' time, it may not be. Yeah. <laughs> so, exactly. Uh, I, you know, we've seen that with like Roseas, Grand Rosella Roseas. You know, they're not as, they're, you know, again, they used to be kind of give away animals or a tenner oh, for an adult. Really? Yeah. So, and, you know, certainly not nowadays. Uh, if you sell spiders from your house, do you ever get inspection from the government on how to keep them? No. Nope. So um, at the moment, um, so I have actually moved um, from a house where I kept them, um, which I owned, um, and now I'm in rented accommodation, but my landlord is a very good friend of mine that owns the shop below, so no, not at all. Yep, he, he lets me keep all my spiders and it's not a problem. And he actually finds it quite fascinating. And I actually, um, he rang me the other day asking if I wanted to drop a load of my business cars off in his shop. Now, I don't think I'm going to get too much custom from that, but yeah, <laughs> he likes I'm sort of known from where I live for being that weird guy with the spiders on the end. I, they, none of them know how many are there because I don't want to scare the neighbours, but they know. I've got <laughs> <laughs> but either, in terms of you get there's so little like legislation when it comes to unless they're endangered to inverts yeah and stuff that yeah. you know no one really really sort of cares too much in terms of if it's reptiles or anything yeah. with a vertebrate then it's a different story and then you need all sorts of licenses and stuff mm -hmm. yeah um for insects no it's not like that people don't really seem to care if it's a spider <laughs> no no okay unless it's you know a sighty species or anything like that but even then you know, you just have to apply for the for the CITES paperwork and stuff. Um, if it's one that needs it. Hey, Sandra. Uh, so my yeah, mum. Um, what was the only way for sure? Absolutely. Absolutely, malt. Yeah. I, I, I bet you will not see anything listed on my website um, as sexed female unless I have sexed it from a mop. And I, what, one term that I really, really dislike um, is when I see people put up a list of spiders and put suspect female. Because suspect female basically is unsexed. 
It's yeah. not suspect, it's insects. Yeah. <laughs> so don't, yeah. don't, don't say suspect, yeah. you, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's either it's been sexed or it hasn't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's tough. Cool. Uh, uh, I'm going to Nick pick this, man. I'm going to guess you mean scientific name because uh, a lot of them are Greek. <laughs> mm. A lot of them aren't, aren't, even, aren't even necessarily Greek or Latin as well nowadays. So I'm going to say you call this scientific name. <laughs> This guy knows too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would say one that's not actually around anymore is the uh, Psychedelicus. I really like that name. I thought that name was awesome. And now they've changed it to Devamatha. Um, but then maybe something like the Chromatopalmus cyanopubescent, just because it's so long. <laughs> yeah. What do you yeah. reckon? I know that, that there is so many. And again, sometimes it's some of the ones that as the, na the names don't exist anymore, kind of thing, like where yeah. they've been revised, you know, um, Bumba Kabota was such a cool name to say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bumba Horrid, and you're like, uh, ah. yeah. <laughs> not as cool as Bumba Kabota. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, but I mean, I, I'm, I'm quite a fan of, of the genus name, uh, Delphlactor, because it translates as Black Spider. Oh wow, okay. That, yeah, that's something that I didn't know. Yeah. That's how it sounds like that literally what the name means is black spider. <laughs> so all the yeah, all the teletactors, and it's like it makes sense. <laughs> so hmm. um and as yeah, that's the lane like I think it's like the like um the kind of Aztec or like an Aztec type language hmm. stuff. So I think it's really cool nowadays that in certain areas are using now languages that are local to the area yeah where the animals be, where the animals found mm. instead of relying just on latin and greek and a smattering of, of a few other names like going actually we come from this area let's find an ancient language or the local language for this area and use that as yeah. a scientific name, which i think mm. is actually really really cool yeah my yeah. mom has actually just sent me a couple of pictures i'm going to show them in the stream so my parents yeah. Two dogs at home, um, and I actually disagree with this mom. Just, just gonna say this. Uh, but they're Great Danes, and she's dressed them in some um, Christmas gear. So that's <laughs> one. That's Apollo. Well, let's let's put it on full. Yeah, he's got his Christmas yeah. jumper on. And then we've got Hades wearing his Christmas jumper. Now, mom, you don't. Dogs don't need clothes, but I mean. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're, they're good dogs. They're good dogs. That's dope. It's cool. Uh, Jeremy says his emperor is really weird. It's brown. What a few months ago, you think of let me show you after Mars dark and it's good size too. Hmm. Interesting, Jeremy. Uh, there we go. So you paid a pound for Captain Born Emperors yet? Literally, yeah. stalkers of them were, yeah. Well, I remember that. Yeah, Dave remembers buying buying them for five pounds, which is expensive in the day. <laughs> Certainly was. So, uh, always a good one. What spider invert would you most like to see in the wild if you had the chance? Uh for me, it'd probably have to be some paraphosa. I think. Yeah. You see the paraphosa in the wild. Um, I mean, for me. I think as this time goes on, they definitely want to go and do some of the expeditions um, out into the world and see stuff in the world. I think the number one for me would have to be a fair so. That'd be cool. I think for me, it'd be a really difficult one to go and see, but I haven't seen some in captivity and they're not in the hobby and they'll probably never ever be in the hobby. The uh, Hogner Ingens, the mm. Zertas uh, Wolf Spider, one mm. of the most critically endangered spiders in the world. Yeah, so I'm on this tiny little island in Europe, and so I'm on the uh, off the coast of Madeira, absolutely stunningly beautiful. Um, and I'm just some of the other inverts on there because you're never going to see them in in hobby. You can see them in a couple of zoos, but that's it. Mm. <laughs> thing, you're never going to see them in the hobby. I guess they're the dead ones in zoos, right? Or live? No, 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 no. live ones are being bred. Oh, wow, well, okay. So, um, it was Bristol Zoo that. So they're, they're no longer open. Um, brought them over. First people in the world to bring them into captivity. 
mm. as I've um, read them very successfully. Um, Whips, and they, I believe Whips, they have them. Um, uh, Long Leap have some. Uh, Ask and Brian College, I believe, have some. There's a, a smattering as with them. Um, and I'm working on trying to get some back, you know, to send some uh, to Dessert Test to start releasing into the wild. Mm. So I think Chester may have some as well, possibly. I know they, they before Crystal sort of closed, they brought over the uh, Madeiran land snails as well, mm. critically endangered land snail uh, from same island uh, to work with as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, it's not about or even like partial snails because getting really critically endangered and so and things that you know something like that would be really really cool to to go and see uh, from a conservation sort of point of view. Uh, okay, Sandra's asked, "What is the funnest prey to feed the spider with?" She loves red runners. Oh, so it's, I don't feed many of my uh, spiders um, this, but uh, it would have to be the uh, hissing cockroaches. And I know a few of the, you guys are not going to like me for saying that, uh, but some of the big prefers uh, when I'm feeding them up for uh, pairings and to produce, yeah, I would say them. It's really, really horrific um, hearing them hiss. And, but I'd say that's probably the most entertaining for me. Yeah. But then, you know, why is... Their life worth more than a cricket or a red. Oh, no, yeah, exactly. No, it's, 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 <laughs> no, it's, but I know a lot of people keep them strictly as pets. So some people do, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I've kept dubia as pets. <laughs> you know, but it's a you know, it, it, it's still a food source. I use hisses as you know, we use them in the work for you know, we give them to the meerkats and and yeah. stuff every now and then. Yeah, and stuff. It, it's. It's part of it. It's you know why is the hisser any more different to, to a red run or a dubia <laughs> sort of thing? It's it's just like, larger. It's how, yeah, it's how it's how people see things. Yeah, sometimes. it's how people see things. I mean, see it sometimes like in the reptile world. Sometimes when people um kind of get a bit sort of funny about where people have like li lizard or snake eating reptiles and they're feeding them lizards or snakes. Yeah, and I'm like, well, how can you do like, Well, why is that? You know. Why is that one worth more than the rodents that you're, you know, yeah. being well, you know, yeah. stuff? If it's raised, you know, in a, in a good manner and it's been dispatched well, humanely, and it's, you know, frozen forward again and stuff, it's essentially the same thing. It's just a different yeah. animal. Yeah. Um, but you certainly, you know, hear a lot um, with things. So, uh, I don't know, Dave's it. With the suspect females, I mean, it's an extra ten pounds. <laughs> yeah, that's all it is. That's all it is. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. hate that. Honestly, that's, that's got to be one of my biggest, yeah. uh, my biggest icks in the spider. Yeah, suspect. So, so I see if there's something from Paris Council I'm about the snakes, but it's grandson. They held some snakes. He told the council they aren't man eaters. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they, you know, they they don't know about what we we keep. Uh, the Emerald Cockroach is excellent. Yeah, Pseudoglomerus uh, Magnifica. So, uh, that's, a good, that's a good scientific name. Mm. Uh, Matt, someone confirmed a female for me, but it was so small, it was done on the microscope. And they missed the male organ for sperm feet uh, and flaps, so regardless, and he's male. I mean, it's one of them. I mean, I think. Yeah. I think that's something like that happens. Mistakes do happen. And if you're buying off a trusted seller or a trusted source, they're always going to rectify stuff like that for you. Uh, but mistakes do definitely happen. Yeah. That's it, Lewis. So, uh, there we go. See, finally, the last show, New York, awesome spider. Looking forward to watching the next grow. Yeah. Very nice. Um, yeah. I got Blonde uh, from you at, the, uh, at that show. Yeah, uh, well. do yeah, they do definitely grow very quick. I mean, the the feeding response in the Ferrofersa is just absolutely mental. Yeah, so watched the crab molt last night. Super cool thing to see. Very nice. <laughs> no, they don't. Please, <laughs> they've got fur. That's their kind of wardrobe. <laughs> so. 
Uh, oh, oh, but that's what's wrong, people. Are you saying that they don't need clothes? <laughs> I, I do, but you probably won't actually. I don't know if you can see him actually. Um, if you're only 10 minutes from it, so I think they're all behind the scenes with the uh, dessert festival spiders because most of the inverts are behind the scenes. Didn't know whip snake. Stuff, uh, I don't know, 60 video Steve Batchel holding a, a wild life tea was good. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, a few people said, How could you with the uh, the, doing the feeding the hisses? Hey, I knew that was coming, um, I, I knew it was coming. It, it you know happens. So, <clears> oh, <throat> hey right, John, can you still hear the scream hisses? <laughs> oh, they, they do scream. Yeah, they do scream. I mean, if it, I've seen um, I've seen pictures of uh, assassin bugs eating um, an adult hisser. No, oh, wow. And so, yeah, it's in the book I've got on Assassin's Creed. I mean, the guy was like, don't recommend you do this. Um, but someone did do this. And it was like, literally, a white spot Assassin was like, Fasimera uh, guitar says, hanging from like the mesh of an exoterror, just and just on top of that with a adult male hisser just hanging from its rostrum. That is like, crazy, that is. I suppose just how strong they can be, but it was like, probably best not to do this. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, um, Oh, Blair's got another question coming. Mm. Do you think her tarantulas hit her controller because it's vanished? <laughs> I'd imagine not, but you never know. You never know. <laughs> so, that's cool. What's wait? Is the a species of tarantula or, or ferrophosa spider um, that perhaps you currently don't keep or stock that you would love to keep or stock? I mean, so I've got, I've got all of the ferrophosa. I've got all of them um, in my personal collection. I've got females of each. Um, is there anything that I would like that I don't currently stock? Yeah, loads. How long have you got? <laughs> loads, loads and loads, yeah. Uh, there's some of the Hutler Pelmer uh, that I'd really like to um to work with. Uh, the Ho Chi Minh, stunning. Hutler Pelmer Robustum is one spider I'd love to get. I mean, a lot of the spiders that you said about stocking, for me, I want them in my own collection, and then we can think about stocking. Um, it's. I mean, if there was a spider that I wanted to get in to stock. Uh, would probably be the Davis Panama because everybody loves them. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot of spiders out there that if I did buy, they'd be going into my own collection before before anything. <laughs> but yeah, I'd say the Haplopelma robustum um, and the Summerpeus black orchid. Um, I'd like to get that just to complete the collection. Uh, Postlaferia smithy. I'd love to complete my uh, Postlaferia collection. I've got the rest. Um, Oh, there's loads. Absolutely loads. <laughs> well, the, well, the, the, there's any problems is that you, chances of actually getting every single one is uh well it's pretty much impossible. Well that's the thing, that's what that's what keeps the hobby <laughs> so fresh because yeah. there I will never have every spider I want. I can do that's this it. for my entire life and I'll never have them all. So that yeah, it's exciting, definitely. Yeah, uh, uh, I don't know if does anybody have every Pokemon Mon card that existed? It's almost the same with the spiders, I'd say. So yeah, the collection will never be complete. It'll be as complete as I can get it. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. And, right, there, there's always new ones being sort of discovered and stuff, and then and there's some that will just again never actually come into the hobby at all. Yeah. So for, for various reasons, um some of them perhaps shouldn't. <clears throat> so, um, as well, on, actually, on that, are there ones that you would, you know, perhaps that can be got, but you wouldn't be comfortable in stocking? 
What what do you mean? So, and is there any spiders out there that I wouldn't be comfortable? Yeah, because sometimes you know, obviously, sometimes it's your things that you know sometimes just been discovered or whatever. Well, then suddenly they're you know being sold at shows across Europe uh, and even the states very very quickly, or at least it seems very quickly to a lot of people and stuff. Mm. And obviously, some species come with a bit of you know controversy sometimes. Um, there's not so much down to <clears throat> controversy, I wouldn't say. Um, but one thing for sure, if if I'm if I'm buying in a species of spider. Um, and if I'm paying a lot of money for it, then I will not sell it. Simply because a lot of the prices that I see for species that I'm after, I co I personally wouldn't feel comfortable charging. Um, so, for example, the uh, Mishana, the Mishana I've seen, um, and I've been offered them, and I've been offered them at £250 a spiderling. Now, if I did pick them up, they'd be going into my own collection because there's no way that I could charge what would it have to be you know 350 400 pound for spider i can't do it i can't do it um so the more expensive stuff i would be getting in for my own collection and hoping to breed to produce them at a cheaper price because i think when you're looking spending upwards of over 100 pound for spiderling i i just think it's a little bit too much personally i mean someone like me um, who has a big collection and I go to the shows for me if I see something and I, and I want it at that price I can sort of warrant it but you know for the for the everyday hobbyist I think spending that kind of money in a spiderling is a little bit too much so that's when we get stuff in say for example the uh, Vietnam Silver we try and keep the prices as low as we can just to make it more achievable for the everyday hobbyist to you know, obtain the spiders that they're after because some of the prices of the spiders when they first come into the hobby is a lot, <laughs> a hell of a lot. I mean, that goes for almost every invert as well, like seeing the isopod world, seeing the scorpion world, and stuff, yeah. um, and stuff like, hmm. like absolutely, uh, that's uh, yeah, barupees, yeah. Uh, uh, um. yeah. Obviously, there was some controversy with those sort of a few years ago. Yeah. I mean, I, I now have one. I did buy one. But not then, but, you know, this year bought one. Chris says, don't mention brief. He's um, yeah. a ticket. I might make uh, Chris jealous now that uh, my one... Uh, I have a milk from my briefies. Yeah, you got a bit. It's sex female. I, it, I bought it as an unsexed juvenile, so I, that's one I need to uh, see if I can you know, give a bit of something and have a look to see what it is. Let's see, they're absolutely stunning. And to be honest, their price has came down quite a lot now. Yeah. It? It's definitely coming down. But they're absolutely stunning. I, I know there was a lot, of bit, a lot of controversy around them, but I mean, I think everybody just seems needs to understand that every single spider in a hobby was originally pulled from the wild. And yep. by pulling them from the wild and producing them within the hobby, which has happened with them, then the price comes down and there is now no longer a need to pull them from the wild. That's it. I think, you know, keeping any kind of exotic animal, uh, every, it all came from the wild at one point. Yeah, uh, um, it's just sometimes the way it's done, <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. And see, some people do it a bit more legit. You know, I'm not going to go into all that because at the end, they you know, you never know the full story of everything, no, no. anyway. Um, yeah, it's, it's like you say, Dave. Yeah, I mean, so for me, I can warrant spending quite a bit of money on a particular species if it's something I want to work with, but I, I, I feel uncomfortable retailing at such high price yeah so i mean you know like with spiderlings say for example so going back to the mishana i was offered them at a good price and they're retailing about 400 but how would i feel if i sold your spider for 400 pound and you got back to me a week later and it died i can't I, I can't do that no no it's too much as in and that's the risk isn't it you know it's like yeah, yeah i know Someone about the guy who I got like my my rubber ducky isopods off. He said, you know, he he was offered some. I can't remember what species species of isopod he said, but it was like coming from like Thailand, and they were going to be like two hundred and fifty per isopod. It's, it's, yeah, 
And he was just like, ain't worth it, ain't worth the risk. Like, no. he was like, well, I need at least 10 yeah. <laughs> to try and get any kind of breeding going on. Yeah. <laughs> like, the shipping all the way from Thailand, like, you know, a lot of risk there. Yeah. Kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, Simon, what's your biggest spider? And which is the funniest and why? Um, the biggest spider I currently have um, is my Furifosa Sturmy, I would say. I, said, I think she just edges it. Um, the blondie and apophysis females aren't quite adult. Uh, I like to buy my females in young. So when I'm buying tarantulas, I, I very rarely buy full-grown adults. Um, for, for, probably a sturmy. And my funniest and why? Um... Oh, that's a good one. My funniest. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I can pick the funniest. Uh, the funniest ones, hmm, probably the ones that give me the most run around. Um, it's funny to look back on, but um, I was actually looking at pairing the um, Mindanao South. Um, and the male went missing in my room for three days. Uh, and he was actually on loan from a friend of mine. So... Although it wasn't funny at the time, I guess it's funny now, now that I've caught him. So, yeah, probably that one's <laughs> the funniest, yeah. Because I have a crack under my skirt and board, which is about that big, but because it's under the rack, I didn't see. Ah. And I was trying to get him into the female's enclosure, and he ran around the enclosure and hit the floor and ran under the rack. I was like, okay, cool, I'll just get him from under the rack. Look down, and as I looked, he just crawled down underneath the skirt and board, oh. he he hands on the head. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> And yeah, three days later, it was late at night. I thought, well, I'm gonna just go and have a little look. And uh, yeah, he was, he was walking around a spider room, so yeah, I guess you could say that's funny now, not all the time. Yeah, I think my biggest probably one of my LPs, probably, probably yeah, my largest I've got at the moment. And then I don't know, my funniest. I always think my beam is broken because it never, 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 never flicks. <laughs> oh, that is a dream. <laughs> Which is like, this is the most awesome beam ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's just, it's never flicked. Because so, I mean, that's a rehomed one as well. I rehomed it. So from time you couldn't look after it anymore. Because so, um, of a, 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 a de deterioration in health. Um, and so, so it's an like, absolutely awesome spider. Um, in some ways, it's funny because, yeah, it's like almost opposite to what everyone always says about behemies. Yeah. So, oh, my behemies. Yeah, God, yeah. I don't even know how they have that much urticate in her. Every time. <laughs> as soon as you touch the you're flicking, and it's like, you are more defensive than the old worlds I deal with. <laughs> they just kick. Oh, man, straight on it. Actually, yeah. no, the very first are the worst. The very first are apophysis I've got. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm going to pop back in just one moment. I need to have a cigarette very quickly. So, change to a Solaris for 700. They're coming down in price. Yeah, they I can't are. remember what they were at uh, Midlands, but I think they were like 400. Maybe, yeah. I know that Brad had them at 400, and I still kick myself to this day, and my dad still kicks me to this day. And um, I went to uh, one of the shows, I can't remember which one. Um, and I was having a little look round, and the spider shop had a sexed seven legged female for 250 quid. And I seen it, I was like, oh, bloody hell, that's a good price. But I was saving for a couple of boulders anyway. I went back to the table, and I told my daddy, he was like, well, go get it then. I walked back, gone. gone. Yeah. So if you ever get to the shows, if you see some in and you think about buying it, just buy it because you're going to regret if you think it. think it's stupid to be true, or you're like, that's a really good deal, get it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, don't I, think... I think we've all learned that at some point. I've certainly learned that. Um, at shows, uh, hey, your hat. So, Jeremy, welcome trees are generally cheap, so yeah, yeah, that would be uh, really, really, uh, uh, good to see, uh, more of those being, uh, being bred and so as they are, they tend to be cheap, but definitely need, uh, people breeding them. <laughs> yeah, no, things that, no, I'll, uh, I'll get round to the sex at some point, or well, 
have a look and see if I can see anything. So, but you know, I'm I'm not I'm not going to be disappointed or anything if it's male or anything like that. If it's male, that would still be awesome. You know, if uh, Chris you know gets another female, then you know and I have a male, cool, we can pair them up, or whatever. Uh, hey Scott. So, so. So, so for anyone who, and this, um, yeah, Luke is going to be giving away a, a Christmas uh, mystery box of undetermined value. So, for anyone in the UK, to enter, all you have to do is make sure you're subscribed uh, to my YouTube channel. Go and give Luke a follow on Instagram, uh, which I'll put a link back in the chat, and then send him a message. On Instagram, uh, saying that you've done both of those things, uh, and then maybe just you know, if you're in it for a beginner box or just a general mystery box, if you are outside of the UK, um, can't be shipped um, overseas, uh, can only be shipped within the UK. But if you still like to enter, and if you win, you can then gift it to a person of your choice within the UK, that is absolutely fine. And obviously, this won't be, uh, won't be uh, posted out until. Uh, January, um, obviously, with the weather as it is in the moment, um, where I am, sort of got a good five or six inches of snow um, overnight, which was uh, interesting because we haven't had that for years. And I mean, obviously, uh, with strikes going on and stuff, and just the general time of year in terms of the lead up to Christmas, always being busier and stuff. Uh, Luke's not posting out at the moment, no. um, but yeah, that's what you have to do uh, to. Uh, to enter. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's have a look. Da, 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 da. But hopefully you, you're all doing well. Again, keep getting your, your sending your questions uh, for Luke. They just popped out for a quick smoke break, but he'll be back soon. So, but um, yeah, down my day, one of the best things is find that uh, Barupi's malt. So, the uh, that's why it's looking good, all nice and successful. So, yeah, really nice to see, and nice to see the uh, the blues on the legs on the malt as well. So, yeah, I'm gonna look forward to actually uh, gently opening it up to, to have a look. Need to find me a uh, island somewhere. I do have an island. Um, that is one from uh, sexing scorpions, the most scorpions correctly, at a, uh, at a conference. Uh, a lot of people say their behemoths are a nightmare for flicking. Mine just never flicks. It's never flicked. Um, just, yeah, just doesn't at all. Uh, DJ, it's also good for human to eat loads of onions before bringing it creates extra sounds. Of, oh my god! Okay, DJ. So, uh, uh. Yep, TSS have I've just put those in stock. I do have an affiliate link for them if you want to use it, you can. So, so I must I must show this uh, picture quickly because my mum would be yeah. like if I don't. Um she sent this picture of my dad when he was about my age. Pretty cool looking oh, game, Danny. There's Daddy Spa. There's Daddy Spa. Oh. <laughs> He's changed. You changed a bit, Dad. I must say. Yeah, he wouldn't. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, you know just, just a, a bit of a beard and. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but there's no beard though. Actually, that's weird. <laughs> so what? There's no beard. What's going on? <laughs> Uh, Scott's asked, have you lost any centipedes lately? 
Um, I haven't actually. Um, I've I've got one left, and it's um the one that I lost. It um yeah, the long story. It got into the shop below me. Luckily, as I say, I uh, I know the owner, um, and I did catch it. But unfortunately, I had to catch it with a glue trap. Now these are used to catch rodents. Um, yeah, and I did catch it. And I thought, well, I'm going to give it a fighting chance. So I cut away the glue trap all around by where it was stuck. And then put it into a bra plus tub with some anchor points and it got off. It got off the glue trap. I have no idea how. Um, so yeah, I'm keeping that one. Um uh, yep. the next time I get them in to sell, they are gonna be housed a little bit differently. But no, yeah, none escaped. Um <laughs> I mean if spider does go missing every once in a while, rarely. Um but yeah, I'm all right. I mean, if 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 I knew that the spiders were contained in my flat and can only escape into my flat then it really doesn't bother me too much with escapees to be honest certainly yeah maybe i'll check my shoes and stuff when that went missing. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. uh harry's asked what is the most aggressive animal you went i'm going to change that to defensive yeah yeah i, I would personally say defensive um yeah I, I i don't believe there's you know i don't say aggressive at all i always say that animals are defensive um i'd say the most defensive probably has to be the p marinas I'd say, um, of, of the tarantulas, I'd say the pea marinas. Um, and I don't really keep many other animals. Um, I keep a uh, albino Burmese. Uh, she's puppy dog tame, although you've got to give her the respect because she's a big old snake and a bite would really be horrible, but she's lovely. Um, and yeah, bar that, I don't keep many other things. Um, I mean, reptiles are cool, but for me, my passion's tarantulas. Um, and when I go to the shows, I do try and mix it up and buy a couple different things. But yeah. I, I struggle, I struggle. For me, it really is tarantulas, yeah. My dad likes some like live food bits. He buys some like, cockroaches and stick insects. But um, yeah, for me, yeah, spiders, 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 spiders. Yeah, for me, in terms of like defensive up here, I don't know, it's either yeah, ABT or probably my, yeah, because like even my the few killer brackets I got, I'm not calling any of them really all that defensive. They just go down their burrows. Yeah. <laughs> but even my ABTs, whenever do, you know, if they're out and about, as soon as I go near, you know, touch their enclosure, they, they just come to go down their burrows or into yeah. a hide or whatever. Very rare, very rarely do I get any kind of defense posture. It's only really when you're uh, rehousing, but I mean, that's understandable because if I had yeah. some trying to pluck me out of my house, I'd go out. Exactly. You're going to be like, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So you're going to be defensive. Yeah. Uh, and exactly how I like it too. Sort of thing. Uh, if you weren't into spiders, what do you think you'd be doing instead? Well, I don't know, but it'd be rubbish. It'd be rubbish. <laughs> I, I was actually thinking this to myself the other day. I was sitting in my spider room just doing my feeding and I was just thinking to myself, oh God, I'm so fortunate to be doing what I really enjoy doing and genuinely I could not see myself doing anything else. Now that I've found the tarantula hobby and now that I've been doing it for so long, I really couldn't see myself doing anything else and I, I see myself quite fortunate to have found something that I enjoy um, yeah. Yeah, and it's like an escape from the rest of the world. I suppose I'd probably be doing um, some job. <laughs> I didn't really enjoy, but then again, you, you've you've got a great job at the the zoo, which you enjoy. So, yeah, as I, as I you know, you know, as of any job it has its moments and stuff. But mm. ultimately, you know, if I, if I wasn't if I wasn't doing what I do now in terms of yeah, working as a zookeeper, so you know, if I wasn't working in a zoo, perhaps I'd have my own my own shop potentially. Mm. Um, I looked into that when I was younger. Um, or maybe I would have taken music a bit further and perhaps become a professional musician kind of thing and stuff. But, um, you know, that's it. But here I am. I, yeah, seeing that I basically do my hobby as, as my living. Um, as I've been, you know, when you do that, you really got to have a really got to have sort of the passion for it. Yeah, definitely. But every single day I'm working with invertebrates and <laughs> think in some capacity and reptiles and amphibians and and stuff. That is a really uh, good question. Yeah, I, I wouldn't like to think about yeah. what I'd be doing. <laughs> stuff. So as I was, well, I didn't spend that on it. That's <laughs> all. So, um, you were talking about my rupees. I paid 170 for my rupees. So, uh. 
That pays off. Night Dave, just for joining. Uh, da, 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 da. Bing. Go. Lee is doing feeders while she's watching. Oh, yeah. Chris is getting another feed mail uh, very soon. Um, I did I did actually see a comment from uh, Marina saying, uh, would I eat, uh, would we eat, um, so like cockroaches and insects? And my answer to that is yes, absolutely, if they tasted good. I mean, if you, yeah, if, 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 say, a little bit of cockroach and stuff, if we could get them in some nice flavor, like maybe some salt and vinegar flavor, then yeah, absolutely. 100%. Uh, if you cook hissing cockroaches the right way, they taste like bacon. I'm interested. Maybe that's what we should do at Seas. Maybe maybe we should do that. It used to be um at some shows, but he um he sold his company. Uh friend if you're a friend of mine, um I haven't I haven't seen him for ages because he's he has gone out of the hobby now and he's down in Kent. He um used to do the shows and have edible inverts hmm. um or and stuff. And um I mean I've cooked with mealworms before, I've cooked with locusts. I've eaten mealworms before. They came in like a little powdered packet and they tasted like yeah. crisp. Yeah. Well, I've eaten meal, you know, mealworms and worry worms. Freeze dry them and put them in the oven. They taste like peanuts. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> a peanutty taste, I yeah. find. Um, I'd happily eat them. Stuff. The thing is, eating land dwelling invertebrates is a thing that's done worldwide, but in the Western world, we see it as a bit screamish and stuff, and it's purely cultural. Yeah, it is, yeah. Because we're brought up not doing it, but if you eat shellfish, you're happy to eat marine invertebrates. <laughs> you know, and well, stuff. And I think it's just a case of, you know, and was it Heston? he done a, I, remember, I think it was a Japanese chef. Mm. They tried to see, you know, the Japanese served him, you know, a bowl of whatever with, you know, some land, you know, like focus in it or whatever. He ate that and he gave this, uh, this other chef a bowl of uh, rice pudding. Mm. And some shows like I can't eat that. What the hell is that? That's an abomination. What you kind of thing, you know? And it's just yeah. cultural. Oh yeah. yeah, how you brought up and what you, what you eat and stuff that we see as a bit, we see as odd. Yeah. But um, at the moment in the UK, it's very much novelty. But I know places like Germany, some of their supermarkets are starting to stop burgers made out of inverts. Yeah. And stuff. So you know, it's it's coming along. Yeah, definitely. So, and of um sort of eventually um I was it uh Doctor Sarah Bain in the bug bug farm in Pembrokeshire she's look been looking at it a lot and she's got her part her husband I think um basically runs a restaurant there serving bug based or invert based dishes mm. and stuff um so which is really cool yeah definitely stuff so, uh a favorite zoo oh. That's a really, really good one. Uh, so I've, I've visited a fair few, um, I've only visited UK ones. My f absolute favourite would be Jersey. Absolute favourite Jersey, because that is the zoo that got me into wanting to be a zookeeper. Uh, Gerald Durrell, the guy who started it, is one of my he absolute heroes. Some of these are the reason that zoos are what they are today. And basically changed them from being... Horrible places and menageries to be in all about conservation mm. and stuff and working with the environment and stuff and working with people uh, across the world and stuff. Um, so that would probably be my absolute favourite, favourite zoo. Mm. So, do you have a favourite zoo, Luke? I haven't really managed to uh, travel to many, so no, I, I haven't been to enough to really comment, unfortunately. But I do need to come see your zoo. Yeah. Definitely. So. Also, uh, what would you be into if spiders not took over? Um, if I could choose something to be into, I think the only other thing I would have wanted to do with my life is to be in a band. If it were, if if the spiders didn't take over, I'd have loved to have been in a band. Um, outside of that, honestly, I really couldn't say. I'm happy it's the spiders. <laughs> well, if you was going to be in the band, what instrument or would you play or would you be the vocalist? Oh, uh, uh, well, the, the, the dream's a vocalist, right? Um, but guitar, no, I'd, love, I'd love to play guitar. 
Um, my parents got me lessons and bought me an electric guitar when I was younger, and I never followed through a bit. And the fact that I can't play an instrument is one thing I want to change. I'd, I'd love to pick up a guitar and just jam. I, I'd really love to play. So, hey, you pick up a guitar, and I'll bring, I'll bring a drum kit over, and we'll have a jam. Oh, I'd love it. So I'm, I'm sitting in the studio now. So there's, there's, there's a double bass there. Um, there's a drum set here. There's guitars everywhere in this house. Uh, my friend is in the band, and I'm so jealous. Yeah, I'd love to play. I'm so jealous. I've got the right people around me. So in time, hopefully, I can pick it up. Yeah, but I don't think I'll ever be in a band at this point. <laughs> Nothing's impossible, though. Who knows? Never say never. Never say never. It feels like people will... I have people that ask me all the time, sort of thing, back from my music days of being like, Phil, when are you going to get back behind the kit? When are you picking those sticks up again and mm. going back on the road and stuff? And so, like, when the time, you know, when I have the time to actually sit yeah. behind the drum kit, yeah, <laughs> so I've still got my kit, but yeah. it's having the time to even sit behind it and dedicate dedicate that time to it because it's not a case of just going, oh, I spend an hour a week practicing, you know, yeah. good time to spend like sometimes eight hours a day practicing, yeah. I mean, a very good friend of mine, um, and Lewis, he can play guitar. He can play, like, all of the uh, Metallica tunes on it. And, oh, God, when he's just sitting there jamming, I look at him, and I'm, I'm looking with envy, man. I'd love I'd love to be able to do that. Yeah, it's a real talent. I'd love, to, I'd love, love, love it. Yeah. One day I will. One day. I'm, I think I just need to lock myself away and just practice. Yeah. Yeah. It can be done. Uh, I'd love to play. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sandra asks, is that an OBT you have tattooed on your arm? Uh, no, it's actually a uh, Subfusca, post nefarious Subfusca. Um, nice. So that is actually meant to be the Lowland. Um, this is the first one that I got done. So it was the first time that a guy had uh, tattooed a spider. Um, so this was sort of the trial. And now my dad has um, them going all around his leg, and they're all better than mine. So let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it is good. It, it, I, I quite like it. It looks like it's standing out. Yeah, but it's a uh, yeah. serious of Fusca. Yeah, I've um, a heterometrous um, spinifer on my arm. Wicked. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, wicked. That's so, um, when I got on, yeah, years ago. It was one of the things I always knew I wanted a scorpion and like as a first mainly tattoo, but as a first tattoo, just mm. haven't been able to afford any others. <laughs> so always knew I wanted a scorpion. And every shoot I went to is always the same of like, yeah, look in the book, and there's all these rubbish tribal ones yeah, that yeah, yeah. print off the internet. Like, no, 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 no. And then happened is back in the days of Practical Reptile Keeping magazine. And there was an interview in there with a tattoo artist who also kept reptiles. Mm. And stuff, and like pictures of some of the tattoo he'd done. It was like you know, scolopendras on on people's arms that looked like they had a scolopendra on their arm. So cool. And so I was like, right, I need to bring him up. He was like, you know, an hour away from me at the time. I was like, cool. Let's see what, you know, he was like, yeah, come down for a chat. Went into the studio and went, I oh, called up about scorpion tattoo. And he first thing he was like, which species would you like? Oh, that's <laughs> that is brilliant. Yeah, that's brilliant. <laughs> and I was like, right, you're definitely the person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're, you're, you want to know the scientific name of the species I want tattooed on me yeah, <laughs> as soon as they say that you're like yep cool take my money Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I definitely want to get more spider tattoos and the reason why is because I know I won't regret them <laughs> so, um, yeah. there we go Michael was asked is there any invert that you're creeped out by or scared of uh, there's no invert that I'm creeped out by or scared of. Um... How night, nice, Steve? I mean, oh, I want I want to get some of the uh, the the bigger centipede species. Um, I feel like they'd be quite challenging to work with. Obviously, once they're housed, they're housed, and you don't really see them. Like my centipede, I've never worked with them, but from they tend to be. A lot can't I mean, like the large American ones like Heros Heros and Glamour yeah. and stuff tend to be from what I've seen a lot calmer than the Asian ones like yeah, yeah. Dilani and stuff. Mm. I, I think it's, I think it's just with them because I mean so like when I'm putting up the spiders or shipping or whatever, it's no problem. But if I am dealing with a centipede, I do put it in the bath. So I guess you could say I'm a bit more wary with that. Because I mean if they are gonna run 
uh, with that many legs, they can they can move they can and, they, and, and they can climb and and yeah, they're they're a bit more interesting. So I'd say that they're the ones that I treat with the most respect at the moment. Um, but there's nothing that I'm scared of or creeped out by. <clears throat> That's it. And you know, differentiate between scared and having respect for the animal. Well, yeah. <laughs> I think well, the animals that res- that that command more respect. I mean, you should treat all of your animals with respect, but some definitely command a bit more. <laughs> That's it. Uh, so, any hobbies outside our hobby? Oh, um, yeah. I mean, I quite like to play games, with my friends. Um, I won't really say it's a hobby though. I'm also play games to um. To pass the time and to speak my friends on my xbox headset it's great because i could put my xbox headset on and i've got like seven or eight of my friends and we're all chatting it's like they're in the front room with me um there's no other hobby by the spiders that i take too seriously no i, I love watching football actually i love 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 football um but no not too many what about you phil like, like you say the musician music's one yeah but i mean i haven't done that for a long time because yeah, work and this and you know the inverts has sort of taken over mm. and stuff. But um, yeah, it was well, it was reptiles, inverts, and drums. Mm. Sort of thing and being in bands and going around the country playing or well, played a fest, a couple of festivals. Mm. And stuff. Um, the large one I played was Bloodstock. Uh, that's one actually no okay maybe I'll, uh, one hobby yeah festivals oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go to download this year i don't care i'm gonna download <laughs> uh, that's one i know uh trash rookie matt he's uh he's booked his ticket for bloodstock mm. uh, like... I, did, I did have a quick look on the website for download and they do a five-day camping ticket now that's gonna be mega <laughs> five five-day camping i mean woo. Yeah. It's gonna be hard work. I mean, last, most of them. Uh, they had last year. Plus, I did an extra day, um, and I was was so glad that like August just gone. They went back to the regular yeah. sort of, of days. We were like, you know what? We thought it was all going to be good, and I was like, it was just too hard work. <laughs> I don't think. Like, by the end, it was all just knackered. I might have to look at bloodstocks. I've heard I've heard you speak about bloodstock a few times. <laughs> It's fantastic. Hmm. Was it uh, so about 170, 180 quid for, for four days? Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, 100 plus bands, four stages. Yeah, no, nah, <laughs> yeah, and everything's nice walking distance from each other as well. It's not, not everything's miles away, no, and stuff. And it's like 20, 25,000 people, so a lot smaller. Yeah, no, so, I don't. Uh, Looking today, yeah, I think I think that's definitely in, on the itinerary for this year coming. Yeah, I need to go to more gigs. Um, uh, oh, Harry's getting a job in a zoo soon. Nice whereabouts? Oh, uh, zoo based in Cheshire, New Zoo. Oh, what's it called, Harry? That's really really cool. Uh, Jeremy's really hoping to do the same as Luke, as much as he doesn't mind his current job. He would much rather work with his inverts all day. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, in, going into the new year, I'm looking at working a couple of days in a bar or a coffee shop, um, you know, just for some extra funds, but more so to get out of the house because I spend all day in my house with my spiders. So I want to make sure that my, my I'm mentally well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I right, yeah. Out there and, um, interact with humans, with real people and not just spiders. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I wouldn't swap it for, for nothing. I mean, yeah, if you're working... Yeah, all the time just in your own house and stuff it must be sometimes you see with other people where so sort of like oh, it's too easy to fall into bad habits or whatever or being like well i'm here anyway I, I don't you know don't need to do this that and the other or whatever yeah. oh yeah sort of, sort of mm. go out, you see yeah basically like right, i'm moving all my stuff out into to units where right i'm doing this full time but i have to go out to go out to do it it's not in my house anymore kind of thing i mean i'm quite lucky because i've got quite a good social life with my friends so we're always going out and doing stuff um but yeah i i feel like i do miss a part of my life where i was going out and interacting with people i wouldn't normally speak to i mean i did quite enjoy being a brister um so i wouldn't mind doing that again um and even just working in a bar yeah <laughs> Remember, you have a proper beard. When it grows on my chin, look, why is there no hair here? <laughs> I mean, the sides aren't too bad, but yeah, 
Yeah. <laughs> if I grow up, if I grow out now, it just don't look right. So when it grows here, if they Phil, actually, you're a good person to speak to. How do I get hair here? Do you use any ointment? <laughs> Is there anything? Like <laughs> mine, mine just, mine just grew. I just, yeah. you know, just, I just, I stopped shaving. <laughs> I used to try and then I got bored of trying to. Say, I was like, no, you know what? I want a big, I want a full one. I want it. <laughs> kind of, okay. you know. Um, so, I mean, so, my dad's got a strong beard, so I will get there, I'm sure. But I'm 28 now. I'd like to bring out a bit more air on my chin, but this is all I've got now, Chris. It's not, look, I can't do anything about it. <laughs> One day. Uh, uh, recently, many, I have, this is recently, I've been to recent a couple of times actually. Had a, um, had a couple of zoo conferences at Reef. Don't think I know anyone who's currently there. I used to know um, basically people that have managed their their mini zoo. Um, it was all right when it was quite good last time I was there. But I said I don't know if I know anyone there nowadays. So I don't know what it's like now. And stuff, but um, I know. I think it's the old animal centre manager. Don't think he's there anymore. I actually saw him at the last show. Actually, I think it was the last show. He, he, Oh, it was there and hunting for ages. So, um, and stuff, but it's going to set at uh, Reef College, Reef Mini Zoo. Love their full bars and members, so that's all, all good. Uh, hey, mess up, where to get my Osmos from? Uh, various places. Um, Micro Exotics is really, really good. Um, uh, as it, although I haven't got from Anscapes yet, but I do have a discount code for Anscapes. But and most of the online stores aren't really going to be chipping out now until until January. Um, I think most of them now said they're not not going to be posting out anymore until then. Um, various shows, and so I've got some that I've got from the likes of Spider Shop or Bitey Things, Curtis Larkin, um, even the uh, Ely Exotics, which is a pet shop. So I've got my rubber duckies and my uh, first lot of Band of Kings from. And stuff. Um, uh, yeah. Nice, Scott. Thanks for joining. So I'm going to start putting together um, the list of people for the draw, for the mystery box. Uh, so if there is anyone that's watching and would like to enter, let's give it 10 more minutes. Um, 10 and more then minutes. Draw. So just the recap again on the Draw Luke is going to be giving away a basically a mystery box of basically a mystery value mystery box. So um, it's open to anyone in the UK, um, but you need to be subscribed uh, to this YouTube channel. Also following Luke on Instagram. And they're going to put the Instagram link in the chat, and then send Luke a message on Instagram. Basically saying you've done both of those things. Um, and then whether you want a uh, beginner box or just a just box. general mystery box. So I'm going to... If you're out of the UK, um, it can't be shipped to you. Um, mm -hmm. But if you still want to enter and you win, you can gift it to a person of your choice uh, within the UK. I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. Oh, hey, Susan. And says thank you, Spar Spiders, for for my babies. Love them to see Versi model last week, and it's so beautiful already. Fantastic. You're more than welcome. I'm glad to hear that. Absolutely thank fantastic. Oh. No youngest is blonde also having trouble growing beards, bless him. <laughs> I mean, I'm not I'm not too displeased, but it could be stronger. Oh. What do you think? <laughs> Uh, uh, can we take that coming off? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> which mm. uh, which wheel did you use? Um, uh, whichever one that came up first when I. What did like, you? Say? What did you say? Like wheel of names or something. Wheel of names. I think I typed it like wheel of fortune or whatever. And it came up like with wheel of names or whatever. The ones that. I've used in the past. Ah, uh, yeah. The same way the names here look good. There we go. And then you just enter whatever you want to enter and the thing into it. Oh. 
Oh, there we go. Mara says, glad, that glad he and Victoria popped up to the conference show. He picked up a nice size grain on for Mictopus Acromatus, which Daddy Spar said, look had forgotten to up its price. £15 price tag bargain and great tea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I think they started on the website at fifteen pound, and then once they got to four centimeter, they were still fifteen pound. Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, got into the hobby. Long story: Arachnophobia wanted to beat it, but jumping two years ago now, ten and five feet fan. That is absolutely fantastic. So, and you won't be the only one. I think quite a few people. I mean. Wasn't well, I've never been prenophobic, but it's only been a there's a lot of people in the hobby. Oh, I think it's just me here. <laughs> where where is he gone? I'm just hey, wicked. Yeah, cool. I need you here because I'm trying to copy <laughs> everybody's names down into the wheel. <laughs> you just hit the lead for a bit. <laughs> I absolutely. Cl- Brush against the uh, the wrong button on my mouse and it kicks me out. <laughs> so, um, I was like, yeah, no, I think there's a lot of people within the hobby that did start off uh, arachnophobic. Okay, Leah's following you on Insta. She'll... I mean, Leah, I'd hope that you've already uh, sub to me. If you haven't, what the hell are you doing, Leah? Yeah. <laughs> Matt only brought a load of agents from Spa Brighton to give away, and loads of people had gone home. <laughs> okay, I'll check that out. So, oh, Diana can't enter because she doesn't have Insta. Um. Banner is yeah. in the UK, yeah, so um, I'll put, I'll just put you in it now. Don't worry about it. it so, yeah, Diana, Diana, if you say yeah, if you would like to be entered, we'll enter you in it, Diana. Yeah, I'll just put you straight in. By the way, if I do get any of these spellings wrong, forgive me. I'm trying to put them all in as quick as I can. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you have any phobias? Uh, oh, actually, I do have one. I can't really. Want... What's the fear of like the deep holes, like lots of little holes? What's that called? Oh, I can't remember. I have heard that before as well. Yeah. I think I heard it first on QI. Yeah, I can't remember what it is. It's, it's not a phobia. I'm not scared, but it like trips my brain out. I can't look at it. Um, it's hard to explain. Um, and then I I dislike heights. I'm not scared of heights, but I dislike heights. <laughs> What is the fear of a I'm going to have to search it. I'm going to have to open a new tab here. Oh, yeah. Yep, Diana says yes, please. Uh, she's on, on the phone tonight. Yep, so if you enter Diana. Have you got any phobias? Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> Not that I'm aware. I wouldn't want to say I don't have any. I just haven't. Come on, I haven't done something. I've been like, you know, what, I'm really scared of this. <laughs> and the thing it may come one day. Yeah. Who knows? So, uh, or a Rupert's reckons trichophobia or something. Trichophobia. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. So it, I'm not scared of it, but when I see certain images like that, it's like the what? There's one on. There's one on. Um, on Google okay. Images, it's like with a hand. Yeah, it's the, the hand with loads of holes in it. I don't know why, but I can't look at it. I can't. It's, yeah, it's, it's a very strange one. <laughs> oh, yeah. So sometimes the holes <laughs> in the vaults where they pull the legs out, sometimes that gets me. It does. It's really oh, weird. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Fair it makes enough. me feel ill. <laughs> I'm not scared. <laughs> it. it makes me feel ill. <laughs> So, so soon as yeah, he has arachnophobia, but lots better now. You used to throw up, cry, shake, go sit in the car. Wow, but you come on a hell of a long way now, which is fantastic. 
from <laughs> Phyllis phobia of Gillette razors. There, there we go. There's my phobia. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. I, like <laughs> <Yeah, it. laughs> I mean, I used to shave, but yeah, I'm going with that. I can't be bothered that, Dave. Oh, tickling Phil's feet. Oh, God. Yeah, maybe that could be it. Stuff. Stuff. But, um, sorry, Phoebe was a intro. I have had a chat with um, with the, the Speakmans. Uh, people are familiar with them, but they, they go on things like uh, um, this morning and stuff. They've actually come to my work and I've spent some time with them and stuff. And you know, May you know, it would be nice if we get some work with those guys at some point. Sort of message, get a little message every now and then for uh, from them. So, uh, Phil, make sure he spells my name right. Uh, which way, Leah? <laughs> <laughs> well, how many series do you have? Uh, currently. Only two currently. Only two centipedes at the moment. Scalopendra, uh, so centipedes uh, I got from Tim Baxter at the uh, the commentary show, the Central Show, and a Scalopen Scalopendra uh, polymorpha at the moment. Shazza says thousands of teas, but I'm petrified of house spiders. That seems to be quite common. Actually, in the uh, Oh, Josh FB, don't have any phobias, but once a hit 25, so not to be able to deal with heights or any form of adrenaline, which is odd. I mean, I mean sometimes things can, you know, you weren't scared of something, and then suddenly you are scared of something sometimes. <clears throat> I mean, so it's that risk thing, isn't it? Like, when you're younger, you don't think of any risks and stuff, and you go full brazen into things as a kid and stuff and then as you grow older you start kind of going oh this seems you know this may hurt me or whatever and then all of a sudden you start getting sort of getting scared of stuff without realizing it okay so i've almost finished inputting the name what's the most unusual or rare species Go on, you, you you do that one, Phil. I'm literally a few off. My most unusual. Um, I do like my unusual stuff. So, I'm trying to think what my most unusual one would be. Do I have anything that I would actually even deem as really unusual at the moment? Uh, da -da 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 -da. Maybe my spiky isopods. Maybe. Even then when we're dragging millipedes. Perhaps. Um, I've kept, in the past, I used to keep uh, giant mites. So I had um, giant red velvet mites from India. Oh, awesome. By unusual things, so about the size of your little fingernail, and they would take down adult locusts. <laughs> and just see these big, uh, these big uh, red velvet mites attacking locusts, which is a, uh, which is always fun to watch. No crime, you John. Um, Gain years ago as well. You, you kept a uh, species of cricket that, to all intents and purposes, looked very similar to a brown cricket, but on steroids. Um, because it was like the size of a scorpion, of like a Asian forest scorpion sort of size, but it was a cricket <laughs> mental thing. Okay, um, did Leah enter? Because I don't have a message from Leah, I've just put all the names in. I don't think I have Leah. Oh, um, Leah, have you not entered? Did, did, you get, did you get a message from Unusual Pets? No, no oh. message.
Uh, yeah, that's all. Just yeah, make sure you follow Luke on Instagram and uh, RS Design. Who? What's the Russell. name? Uh, Russell. Yeah, I've got Russell. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, hey, ads. Which unusual tea? That was species of Panama. And Sharon was hopefully nailed uh, a Solaris. Nice. I've got 23 so far. And Leah is on Reason was gifted two H Max a few weeks ago as a beginner. <laughs> Someone clearly loves you. They can be really, they can be really calm, actually. Mine are. Is, uh, there was a rehousing video of H Mac after that, you know, it doesn't run around or anything like that. So I'm sure Dave, Dave must have as well. Dave's little BCC, he must have some good H Mac videos, I would have thought. So, um, yeah, they they certainly can run, but uh, they can also be really, really, really calm. So those are the names that I've got so far. We're almost ready to spin. Oh, we're getting close. Getting close. Giant mites. Giant mites. <laughs> oh, desert phobias. Ew, he's freaking out. Oh, see, I, 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 I again. I was. My mum's really scared of ear weeks. So, um, when I looked at buying, getting in, um, giant ear weeks, she's that was a big firm name when I lived there. <laughs> I had ones that are good, sort of four times the size of. UK native ear wigs. I've got you, Leah. Ah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, Look, you better add me for the Panther Beta. I've had three messages from you one on Facebook and two different Instagram accounts, and also Lewis has entered for a Panther Beta spot. So. <laughs> Yeah, he's still got one entry. <laughs> okay, I'll go unusual on that being Bumper Horrider, the only species I came across when the male ate the female and then found out here this has happened to a couple of people who have done some sort of breeding. Okay, interesting. Uh, okay. Right. So apparently Lee is trying to cheat, apparently. How is Lee trying to cheat? I was just reminding you, this uh, won't be posted out until the new year. And I'm not, I'm not, is Yorkshire Tees? So Yorkshire Tees, yeah, and Sharon Darcy. So that's one entry, isn't it? Because Sharon Darcy's entered. Uh, is Sharon Darcy, are they? Okay, yeah. How many have we got now? Oh, cool. Have you missed anything? Depends. Michael, have you entered for the giveaway? I haven't got Michael on there yet. Michael Taylor? No, I haven't got Michael. So if you want the chance of winning a undetermined value mystery box. It's uh, going to be a very good value, but I'm just not going to put a price on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's be a good one. I'm not going to give out rubbish boxes. It's going to be a good one. Yeah. No, I just, I might go if you quickly go on to on to Luke's Instagram. There's a link. Five entries so far. Uh, but let's give it till let's give it till half past. So half past I'll do yeah, the half past to enter. So um make sure you subscribe to me. You go over there onto Luke's Instagram, click follow, and then message Luke. Yeah, as says, yeah, one entry, man and wife. Um, 
And since we're talking about actual Yorkshire tea, I mean, there's the best tea. Love a cup of Yorkshire tea. Okay, uh, what do I have to do if you can't do Insta? Well, if you, would you like to enter my call? Well, into because we've done that for Diana. I've got Ants Rambling and they're entering a the giveaway, but they put that on the comment. Um, Ants Rambling, is that have you already entered? Like, have you messaged me privately? Have you got a different account? Because I'm, I'm gonna put them in, but I don't know if they've already messaged. So, oh. if if Ants Rambling, if you still want to trying to, to cheat the system, it. <laughs> <laughs> We may need to make that picture public. <laughs> okay, John. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. You don't need to put a time. She won, and you're going to put it with a pant face. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, Amram says entered. Uh, in before it contains five and in C4, Marinus, three agents, two H Gigas, and a TL Bob in the fair tree. Marina, I can see that you haven't entered yet. So, are, are we going to enter? Oh, have you got too many spiders now? That actually is never too many. Enter. So Erin's just messaged me. Okay, five minutes. This is gonna be a good one. There's there's quite a lot of people. Here. I think we're approaching 30, 30 entries. So yeah, Michael says cool and him. So did Ants get back to me? Because I'm not. Okay, so Erin's entering. That's great. Let's put Erin in there. Okay, loads of people are now following me, so... There we go. <laughs> yeah, come on down, lads, yeah. I don't work, uh, or I tend not to work uh, Sundays and Mondays. Um, but yeah, any other day that we're open, shoot me a message, whatever. If I'm free, I'm, I'm happy to spend some time with some people, just, yeah, showing them a few things. That's it, Aaron. Yep, give it a go. So, I think someone said um, Scott's entered on behalf of um, Mark and Victoria. Yep, I put A8 in here. Yep. Cool. So I need to put Aaron in quickly. Uh, cheers, Aaron. I'll check that out in a bit. <laughs> Okay. I believe you are entered, Michael. Um, I haven't got a message from Michael. He doesn't have Instagram. Oh, okay, I'll enter him. <laughs> okay, so Susan, um, let's add you. Oh, hang on. Okay, yeah. So Paul Paul Hadfield is Ant Rambling. Okay, that's cool. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, cool. Okay, so. It's gone a little bit quiet. We have got 29 entries. 29 entries, nice. It's a nice amount. Well, just a few more minutes. Yep. We're gonna give it at half past. We're gonna do we're gonna do the uh the draw. Let's put Instagram in there. I'm gonna run uh, to very quickly. I might as well put uh, some website in obviously, uh, it's not shipping out 
at the moment. Um, as I'm not, probably not until uh, January, but anyway, if you fancy uh, doing some spider shopping in the new year and you can't get to a show, go. Uh, so, which giant invert species would take over the world fastest? Hmm. There's a few that, if it wasn't for us, well, there might be the inverts have, they rule the world because without them, we nothing else can really survive. Oh, um, oh, which message, John? Did you send one on here or to Luke? I will double check when he gets back if he sent it to Luke. Oh. So, uh, yeah, ants are definitely, you know, ones that would uh, potentially uh, run the world a bit. Um, no, I don't think centipedes would take over. So, so uh, before we do, well, Chris has asked, have you looked into basically other couriers to post transfers like DPD, ABC, UPS? Um, I haven't. I think a lot of them don't send inverts, I think. I know UPS definitely don't. DPD, I'd be surprised. No. Yeah, well, as far as I'm aware, I don't know of anyone necessarily using them. The, the like send, I know some well, we use parcel force with like when it's like big, big orders with like dry goods and stuff, but that's part of raw mail anyway, isn't it? Parcel force, I think. Yeah. So, but the only other kind of couriers, but they've been named really expensive are like the, the reptile specialist couriers. They're so probably looking at a fairly expensive. Um, there, possibly, I don't know. Somebody on the chat that said that they didn't have um, Instagram, someone that you said. Uh, Michael Taylor. Michael, uh, that's right yeah, I haven't put Michael. Uh, yeah. And then, not about not read his message yet. Who, sorry? John Loach. Oh, yeah. yeah, John's in. Yep, John's in. Yep, John's in. Cool. A hey, life eating. <sighs> So everybody who's messaged me uh, is in already. Kai Taylor. Uh, I've just had Tommy James. There's a message on Instagram uh, two hours ago, so asking to enter the giveaway. Oh, yeah, Tommy James is already in. Oh, yeah, you're in, Kai, yep. Kai, I think. Matt looks forward to seeing as many people as possible. See, so I'll be there. Ah, uh, yeah. Seas is a fantastic show. Oh, apparently, APC and DPD do. First, I've heard them in the I don't know. I mean, I haven't looked into it too much, really. Because we've always. I uh, just price of things that they're, they're expensive. Uh, Chris, uh, Chris and Mrs. works for APC, and they get livestock all the time. Okay. Yeah, says the second second prize is a tour around around the zoo I work at. If I have to, if people come here and have the time, I'll happily spend some time with people. If I'm able to, I'll happily uh, see if I can arrange to meet some animals. I'm sure uh, Matt can tell you about that when he came here. Okay, I think we're ready to do the spin. Oh. So I've got bang on 30 entries. 30 entries, nice. Yeah. Are we ready? I feel a little bit nervous spinning this. <laughs> we'll put it on full screen for the spin. All right, yeah. So let's do it. Right, we're going to do it now. Ah. Ooh, good luck, everyone. Ooh. 
<laughs> it had to be. <laughs> nice, Rena. Well done. Congratulations, Rena. Oh, if it was going to be anyone, it had to be Marina, didn't it? <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, won the mystery box. So, obviously, yeah, that's going to be not until January that that's going to be uh, posted out. Uh, yeah, we've been posting now to a new year. All deaf as a grid locked and already have a week back log. Yeah, exactly. No, no, but not so. We we haven't got an official date to start posting in the new year. It's going to be in the new year uh, when weather's good and hopefully strikes are off. But um, definitely not before the new year. No, not at all. Yeah. Ah, uh, Matt. Actually, just wants to play with the red pandas. So, you come and do your uh, your tortoise experience, the African sounds experience with the tortoises and the uh, turacos. And who knows, maybe might be able to swing Suffolk. And so, uh, uh, Vicar Vic was the first tee a year and a half ago. Tunnels out in the open and always out. Is that a good sign? Uh, when you say tunnels out in the open, I presume you mean like the silk web tunnels. Yeah, that's what I'm guessing. Like, like the silk hammocks at the top. Yeah, that's tough. Um, I mean, I find well, I'm going to Evix at the moment, but like my my carabine at work, it was saying it's you know sort of silken, um, like hammock and stuff. But yeah, every now and then we'll just sit out and about in the open. I'd say that yeah, it's definitely normal for um, Avix. My uh, my female female Avix, Avix just webbed up her whole enclosure. <laughs> if I send you a fish slipper, you can slap in the YouTube. We know that visits the zoo. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh man. Fame sadness at having too many spiders. <laughs> is it easy to breed centipedes? Um, I've never actually bred them off captive, kind of captive born them sort of thing. So, where basically wild caught females I've had that are gravid and then sort of birthed. So, but I think it's, okay. it's, it's sex in them that's not. Yeah, the sex is a tough part. Of that. It, it's it's done, but it's, it's you know even need, you really need to have like CO two on hand, and it's mm. we do know it can cause them some distress. Um, but certainly less distress than drowning them. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the people that stick them on the water to knock them out. To take some of um, I don't text any of my, my centipedes. <laughs> it's, it, it's a difficult one. It's a difficult one. So, the meat may be quite fascinating, isn't it? But I mean, it's something I'd like to do, but yeah, it's just getting the CO2 and it's, it's a lot of work, isn't it? Uh, that, <clears throat> that's it. I think suppose I would, I'd prefer to use isoflurin, but you can't really get that as a hobbyist and <laughs> stuff. That's more of a vet thing. Um, yeah, look, that'd be a bit a bit safer to use. That's why everyone uses CO two because it's that's definitely easier to to get. It's still safe, but yeah, we do know now that can can cause some distress if if you well, if you use it wrong as well. Always oh, good. One do you prefer feeding your inverts at night or during the day? Oh, that's a good one. Um, so I've I, I try I try to keep my Monday to Friday. I try to say start doing spider stuff at ten and finish at six. However, my favorite time to feed spiders is late at night, uh, past midnight, when nobody can disturb me and I can put my music on and just 
zone out and feed. Yeah, so my favorite time to feed spiders is late, like night owls late. <laughs> but I try to do it in a day where I can. Yeah, mine, mine varies. I, like today, I've done all everything today. And stuff, but then it means that you know I can have a couple of nights where I have a bit of a rest after work and stuff. If, mm. and then sometimes I'll do a whole day of zookeeping and then come up here and do and then like an hour or two of of maintenance yeah. and stuff, or yeah, having a stream on or whatever on. And stuff. So yeah. for me, it depends on like a day to day basis. Mm. Okay, well, it doesn't do it behind a bike or hidden. The uh, uh, tub where tub tun web tunnels everywhere. Yeah, that's no, the Abix are sort of like so that they make their silk and retreat just yeah. where so it's sort of like the burrowing species. Some dig holes and some make holes. <laughs> that's it, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, So, yeah, that no, sounds like you're doing all right. Sounds like you're doing good things with these. Uh, if they're not kind of, uh, yeah, running around the enclosure and stuff, if they're, you know, if they're calm whenever you, you know, you're doing them and stuff, to me, that's always good signs. So, like Chris, let's see if you enjoyed it. Stuff and then, uh, yeah, jumping spiders are, are awesome. I've got I've just got one jumping spider at the moment, the uh, Philippus octopatatus. Um, awesome, awesome little jumper. So, what is it? Yeah, never be if anyone, anyone coming into it, never be scared of asking any question. There's no such thing as a silly question. No. So we all started somewhere we, you know, whatever question you have, we probably had at some point. <laughs> so, and, you know, you may have a question that, you know, potentially we, you know, we may not even know the answer to. And we may be like, oh, actually, that's really good. We haven't thought of yeah. that. Oh, that yeah. Happens sometimes. Yeah. There's, <laughs> so, there's, which, always, there's always good questions that catch you out. Yeah, definitely. That's it. Which I absolutely love because I'm like, Hey, you know what? I don't know. I need to go and have a look myself. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> so yeah. I figured you have something to research. It's like, oh, yeah. let's have a look. Uh, Shazza says, V, there's an afternoon. Um, by the way, C is a uh, don't tongue fear, try and keep it natural so they can hunt their prey. Um, there's plenty sometimes they eat it there and then. I can see, yeah, that's cool. Uh, oh, no, Ant Ramblings. Uh, no worries. Cheers for doing it. So, yeah, you can watch heaps of YouTube videos and that loads. Fantastic. Yeah, some really good ones out there. Some really good channels. So, yeah, obviously, got Dave. Um, we've got Scott. We've got um, Steve's uh, Transatlantic Enclosures. Fantastic as well. Um, Inverbarian. There's so many. There's, there's so many you can't really list them all because there's so, there's so many good channels out there. Yeah. And so I've got Unusual Pets. So I've got Prancher Rookie. Matt, you know, that's a great channel. Uh, there we go. Sure, he cares fine, Susan. If you watch Reloads, as they always a learning process. Keep on learning. Every day's a school day with it. And so, if if someone tells you that they know everything there is to know about stuff, and chances are they're, they're lying. <laughs> it was like, oh, I know something new. And so, I always remember, you know, what works for one person may not work for you as well. Yeah. And so, our rooms are all different to each other's. So, I mean, well, I mean, usually we we could have vastly different opinions on the how we keep 
the same species of tarantula, but what works for you may not work for me, and vice versa. Yeah, definitely. That kind of thing. And I there's can all be. Of, there's definitely a lot of grey areas. Yeah, oh. I, don't, I wouldn't say there's any. There's there is definitely some right and wrong. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, different things work for different people. Yeah. Yeah, I think you know, it can be sometimes as simple as you know. A big change can be what shelf you keep keep on. Sometimes oh, yeah. it's going to make fast changes and how on you know in terms of your husbandry, um, with the microclimate of then that enclosure on that particular shelf. Yeah. It's it you know, no, exactly. sometimes it's insane. That's a lot of what I play with in uh, in my spider room. So in the room where I keep everything at the moment, I keep a heater in the middle of the room, um, and I use the shelves so as they go up higher, they're warmer. So I keep certain spiders on different shelves, and that's also what I do uh, with a lot of the breeding. Um, so a lot of the breeding I do, if I think a trench is going to get close to dropping, depending on species, I'll bump temperatures a little bit. Some species you'll bump a little bit of humidity, and I just have different grades of temperature on each shelf. But I mean, if you're keeping your spiders at around mm. about, you know, you're 20, between 20, 24, they can all thrive at that temperature. Um, it, you're only looking at real getting higher when you're wanting to uh, breed certain species, I'd say. Yep, that's it. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, this is an age-old debate. <laughs> Your opinion on mesh lids. Hmm. See, I've, I use a lot of uh, custom aquaria enclosures. Those are my go-to. Um, and Matt's a really, really great guy. And I've had a lot of people say that the spiders would chew at the mesh at the back. Um, I've not had that happen once. Um, and I've not used never, it. never, never had that happen. Um, especially from his, his enclosures. So I use custom carry a lot. Yeah. Um, I mean, his mesh is the one on the side and stuff. I mean, I think so, you know, his enclosures are recommended by the BTS. Yeah. You know, it was the BT, the British Transit Society, they, that actually gone making enclosures yeah. <laughs> and recommend you know it was their kind of recommendations of how to make them as well that's yeah. why he yeah. uh, you know some of his are unvented yeah and I, i've seen like i have seen a couple of pictures um where like you know say it's a spider's tried true uh chewing through um but i mean for me personally i've never had it happen and I think it all also depends on how you've set that spider up and what spider you've put in the tank. I mean, if a spider is going to be trying to chew out of the mesh enclosure, it's probably not always, but it's probably not set up quite right. I'd say. Yeah, yeah, I, I would, I, I would, I would agree, agree with that. And then you know, in the zoo industry, we use um, often use like custom aquaria. We use a lot in zoo, UK zoos. So, um, as well as the big brand, well, you know, Exoterras and stuff, actually. Exoterras are used a lot in zoos. Mm. So, um, obviously, yeah, yeah, that sort of age old debate of, you know, trying to get their, their legs stuck in the mesh and stuff. I've never had that happen in all my years of keeping them. Uh, it's often that I think there's risk of everything, there's a risk in feeding your tarantula. <laughs> yeah. Um, as I've you know, yeah, mitigating that risk, but also kind of going, well, how likely is this this risk? And you got to think of what works again, what works for you, mm. sort of thing. Um, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of up to, up to you, really. I personally, I'm not a fan of. I'm not a fan of actually changing exoterra mesh for acrylic, but that's just me. That's not to say that people that do that is wrong, but they're not wrong. <laughs> it's a lot of personal preference as well, really. It really is. It completely is. Yeah. So, but there is different types of mesh, as um, yeah, Matt's put, you know, um, and some of it's down to what what you like. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's put actually well, pros and cons of glass, plastic, acrylic. It's kind of going up to you, really. Yeah. I think, to be honest, all of them can be treated exactly the same. It's just what you prefer. I mean, a spider doesn't care if it's in glass, plastic, or acrylic. So, 
I think that pretty much says it all, really. Um, I mean, I like to use glass for a lot of my uh, bigger spiders, but that's because I like glass, not because they yeah. like glass. They don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you like glass, you know, you like glass because you're know, making the display out of it. Yeah, and you know, it's easier to see it without taking lids off and stuff. Yeah, um, but ultimately, as long as what's in the enclosure is functional for the spider. Yeah, definitely. Then it doesn't really matter what. Aesthetically, what it actually looks like. I mean, when I go to my spider room, a lot of the um, customer uh, prairie tanks that I have set up, a lot of the spiders I can't see in them, and that's because they're happy. They're all hidden away in the court tubes or buried away. Oh, uh, uh, there was a post about a customer prairie the other day, first time someone's had a mesh tube through one of theirs. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, like I say, I have heard it and I have seen it. Um, but I mean, if 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 that was a problem for you, if you spoke to Matt and you said, "Hey, look, can we get some thicker mesh on the back?" He'll do that, no problem. Because yeah. I, I was speaking to him about it, and he said that um, you shouldn't have a problem. I've never had a problem myself, but you know, he can double up on the mesh on the back, or he can change it. So, custom aquaria is, as you say, custom. So, if you get in contact with him, he can custom build exactly what you're looking for. You just have to phone him. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Phone him yeah. Online. <laughs> I mean, he, he moved into the 21st century like the other year. It really surprised me when he first gave me a text. I was like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you know how to text? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, it, it, it is, it, you know, it's kind of, it's up to you, really. Um, I would never tell people you have to do this or that or whatever, you know. It's what you feel most comfortable with at the end of the day. So, uh, tuning that that sounds like gigas tuning tuning that the air holes and stuff. Yeah. Oh, I, I get it. Yeah, I get it now. Still, <laughs> so it was um, it's the Brighton show. There was, you know, especially in the, sort of the, the plastic square tubs that the spiders, you know, often in that, on the tables and stuff. And there was a couple with decent sized holes that have been chewed. Yeah. And they're, all, they're all the gigas. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, oh, yeah, no. How I lost um how I lost the centipede actually was I put it in one of the uh, square tubs, you know the ones with the air holes in. Um they're, they're like the German tubs which they put their live food in. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Them everywhere, yeah. So I had a centipede that it escaped because it chewed through the top of that. And literally, I'm not joking, the hole it got out was, was so minuscule. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's surprising oh, like, what they can, what they can uh, squeeze themselves through. Uh, oh, there you go. Matt's uh, camera got stuck in exo lids, and yeah, he likes secret look, look, which is fair enough. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. Hey. There we go. So you know. It, it can, you know, I think it can happen. Yeah. So, but it's kind of, you know, up to you. Uh, yeah, I've, I've never, never, ever, ever had any problems with anything getting stuck. Um, I don't really use EXO, so I don't really have the mesh lid problem. Um, the only EXOs I use, I keep um, a couple of regardless in. Um, and I've never had a problem. But yeah, like, okay. yeah. Well, a, a Hamorian Exo and Pokey from Moza Exo. I haven't done it, and yeah, no, I mean, me, Hamori, it's still Hamori, you know, it doesn't climb up anywhere. No. <laughs> it sits on, on the ground all the time. The other Exos, they're 30 by 30s, they've got scorpions in and stuff. Mm. Sort of thing. So, yeah, as, as I say, you know, friends, uh, da -da 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 -da. I haven't kept any of those stag beetles before, as far as I'm aware, Harry. Stag beetles are a bit... I don't tend to do stag beetles so much, because they can be a pain. <laughs> they can be a real, real pain trying to rear up stag beetle live with, again, the, the substrate completely right. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Yeah, I would still buy from Matthew for sure. Matthew's great. He's fantastic. So... Uh, some macro footage on the mesh types. It's interesting to see differences. Yeah, mesh can really be 
for me, Mess is interesting when it comes on to the reptile side of things with UV and so because of the amount of UV it actually filters out. Remember the piece to choose bloody plastic lids. Oh, and uh, DJ caught, caught his pee pee in an exoterra mesh, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Yeah, yeah. Two Hamori, LP, Panfo, Alphaceps, and Nandu in exos. I'm going to have to leave the stream at 11. Yeah, um, cool. I was thinking it's... probably because we're going. I, I did say it's <laughs> Probably end about ten, and it's now ten to eleven. I know it's, it's, it's not a problem at all. It's just I'm, I'm <laughs> conscious because I use my friend's studio, and they've both got work in the morning, so I'm just a little bit conscious of time. I mean, if this was at my place, which it will be eventually when I've got a nice little setup at home, um, but yeah, I'm just conscious because I've, I've got work. <clears throat> yeah, no, no, absolutely. So yeah, we'll we'll run it until eleven o'clock because yeah. yeah, I've got work in the morning as well as followed by staff party. So. It's all going to be fun. Nice uh, stuff, party. Christmas party. Yeah, it's our Christmas party at the zoo. Wicked. So, well, should be. <clears throat> Might depend on the weather, maybe. But yeah. Um. So, has anyone got any last minute questions for Luke before uh, we close down? No, I've really enjoyed tonight. It's been good. It's been some great questions, and it's always good coming on the live. I do enjoy it. I'll have to um, I'll have to come back sometimes. Definitely. Ah, uh, definitely. They're always welcome. Always welcome on. So, um, even have the honour of being the, the first guest of me using my new webcam and stuff, which I tested out for the first time only the other day on someone else's stream. But <laughs> this is the first one of my own streams using right. this camera. And stuff because uh, my other laptop just wasn't working properly. <laughs> and this one, laptop one, currently didn't come with a webcam. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's also had to quickly order one. It's like the, the first the first live stream um I don't know, I did it with Scott and part way through my phone died and then it wouldn't charge. So I had to yeah. get my dad to come from his house. We remember that. Phone, yeah. We remember oh, yeah, Daddy Star coming to the rescue. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. The stress when my phone died. Oh my god, I was so stressed, you would not believe. <laughs> <laughs> Just of uh, no Rory Susan no over here. Always, always happy to help. Help. Rosie, if someone's not ha happy to to help, don't listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm always happy to help. I mean, you know, if if you drop me emails or message on social media, I'll always help where I can. Um, might not be able to get back to you straight away, but I'll nah, sometimes it can take a while. But like, yeah. <laughs> well, never mind about answering the questions. Uh, <laughs> Matt's got five hours of Mitch's live streams to watch back afterwards. So Mitch is doing live streams every night, isn't he, at the moment, doing giveaways? Mm. Obsessed with spiders, who knows? <laughs> that was nice. Uh, yeah, and here is a mantis, a, a little uh, uh, Herodula uh, Embracina. So it's live planted. I don't call it bioactive because that's just a buzzword. Doesn't really mean anything. So, but uh, it's just up here at the top. Probably can't. See. Actually, I can move this camera around. I've got this, this one because it's then on the cable. Turn the lights back on. What's up there? So yeah, it's just life planted. So I'm just in the in an XO with a uh, Arcadia Jungle Dawn for lighting. Yeah, so it's like yeah, a little <clears throat> that one down there. There's stuff absolutely everywhere. <laughs> In there. Uh, cheers, Matt. Thank you. 
Ooh, there we go. John, what would be your ideal Christmas gift animal to receive? Spider. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Mine would be really unrealistic. Like, I don't know. Komodo dragon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Really awesome. <laughs> Will never, ever happen. I'd love to work with them. Came this close to a few years ago to net, getting the job uh, working with them, but just got pitched in the place by someone who, who just had a little bit more experience than me. But that's the way he's at Zookeeping goes. And so I would love to work with those guys, but yeah, I'd, I'd go unrealistic and say, yeah, something like a Komodo Dragon. Have you have you uh, have you got a uh, wish list for Christmas? Have you have you gave your list to anyone? Have, is there anything you're about for? In terms of animal wise, no, <laughs> no. So, um, what the only real thing I actually asked was, was basically a, a, a label printer. Yeah, is it, what <laughs> is that for labeling your own stuff? Is it? Uh, for late for doing um like price labels when I have stuff at shows. Ah, okay, cool. So, I mean, I use um the Dymo label printing machine. I use that to label my tanks. Yeah, uh, yeah. Then I just use a template on my laptop and print labels on the sticky labels. And so, the so problem I have, I have, I don't have a print like a regular printer, and like my flat's so full that I don't know where I'll actually stick a regular printer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I saw like, right, what it? Because yeah, in terms of labeling my tanks, I tend to just actually do that just like on Word, and because I made. Because I'll do displays for them, I'll do very mini zoo style signs for them. Mm. I like to put a picture of the animal on on the label, you know, and then like a common name, scientific name, and then just a little bit of information like its diet, lifespan, yeah, that sort of thing. So when I do like the Halloween display at work, or sometimes sometimes I do like someone says them or lend them to my parents for their um, animal displays at shows, country shows, and stuff. People know what they're looking for, and they get just a little bit of information about them, sort of thing. Um, so, um, yeah, I think I'm getting one. There's one that Jeremy's got actually. He got uh, in the year, so a firm, like a Fermo sort of printer. They can just do labels on your phone, and then it prints it out. Because mm -hmm. currently, I, yeah, when I take stuff to sell at, at shows, it's Normally, case me writing it all out and then emailing it over to my dad to, to print out and then cut it off and stuff. Oh, I've had I've had some nightmare experience trying to get labels done before shows, but I've finally got a system that works. So I'm not changing. I could probably do it a lot simpler, but stuff. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, okay, Lee's going to win the lottery and buy me a Komodo dragon. You'll also need to probably buy me a lot of land to house one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and everything else to be able to house one. Cool. Thing. cool. Okay, well, it is 11 o'clock now, so we will probably close up. So, well, cheers everyone for watching, joining, and taking part. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I'll say a massive thank you uh, to you, Luke, for, for coming on. I oh, know you're welcome. Uh, and, uh, and offering up a, uh, a mystery box. Um, there was no problem by me of you know having stuff and giving them away, away or anything like that. That was completely looped. That no, no, no. It's all, it's, all, it's all for a good cause. Yeah, and it's and like I say, it's it's Christmas time, and yeah, it's my first time coming on your stream. So thank you for having me because I mean I, I haven't done many streams before. I've only ever done Scots, and um, no, yeah, I really quite enjoy it. It's it's it's, it's good. It's fun. Yeah, no, they they're good fun. They're good fun. This is probably going to be my last one for this year. Probably, I have no more planned this year, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, stuff, I'll see. Yeah, this time of year starts getting busy with other things. And yeah, stuff, and probably over the next, you know, there'll be a point where I'll probably take a break for just a couple of weeks over over the Christmas period and New Year yeah. period. Yeah, so then get back into it all next next year um but yeah thanks for coming on Luke. thanks everyone for watching yeah and um i'll see you all again soon
see you soon. Hey.